When Dick Down in Dallas came out, you know, I heard a lot of, you know, oh, that guy made himself a one hit wonder, you know, career, like, you know, all that stuff. And then Single Again went number one on iTunes. So everybody can lick my butt. That's right. That's right. And that's, so and like, that's in me too. I yeah. want to, I want to have something pop that I can just turn around and say, you know what? All of you guys. Yeah. Lick my butt. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Grab the KY and get yourself ready. You got some slide to do. What's up, guys and girls? Trey Lewis here. Welcome to my podcast, DM Monday. My co-host, Matt Burrill. Fuck Matt Burrill. He's back. Damn. His, <laughs> I told y'all we didn't fire him. And Trey Bonner. Yeah, man. His uh, his firing didn't last very long. Yeah. No, it was quick. We never fired you, man. I know. But we had the we had the listeners and the watch and the people that watch it on YouTube going. Like yeah. we kept it going for like five minutes, and then after we told everybody that you weren't fired, we just talk shit about you well so. yeah i mean i think i figured as I much i feel kind of bad because you weren't here to defend your honor no but i don't know what i would have said i mean it is it's it is what it is you know but you defend your honor pretty hard at the ryman last night i did i was on one last night speaking of the ryman how was that last night <laughs> dude you? i mean we sang dick down in dallas at the ryman and the whole crowd was singing along how was it in the crowd it was awesome. It I just, was awesome. I, I Even we, the people that didn't know it, I was like, dick down, dick. I was like, this is your part. This is your part. Yeah, I was a rule breaker for about 40 seconds and had my phone out and got a little bit of a video. Yeah. Um, and it's really of you just talking about like where you were two years ago to where you are now. So yeah. it was cool to capture that. But it was just sick. And then the, the comedy show as a whole was just Dude, a lot it was of hilarious. Fun. Bob and his crew are the shit. Like I'm starting to get to know Ash, them a little bit better. Was it Ashy Larry, uh, the last guy that was on? No, Damien. What was it? No, his name. My so. phone's not with me, but I have the the day sheet. Yeah, but he was on the Chappelle show. Darnell. 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 Yeah. I live under a rock. Darnell, he but was. he was like Ashy Larry or something on on one of the oh, Chappelle really? episodes. He was yeah. in a he was a few few characters within yeah. there. But what was wild too is afterwards the after party, Darnell was on stage singing "Bored in the, the USA. USA," singing yeah. Bruce Springsteen, yeah. just getting after it. It was it cool. was a good time. Uh, by the way, this episode is brought to you by Liquid Death. Um, not that they give us money to have our podcast. We still have no sponsors. But they did <laughs> give us 50 cases for the entire Kid, Kid Rock Tour. Brill's Basement is just stacked full of them. Oh, we've got tons of cases. Um, and it's the best water I've ever had in my entire life. Like, you drink it, and it's like... It like, man, that's water? It gives you life, you know? Have you had it yet, Bonner? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, it's really good. cool to have water in a can. It makes it a lot cooler when yeah. you're at a bar than yeah. sitting there with a little And sometimes cup. I'll just drink them on stage, and everybody thinks I'm not a loser, and I'm I'm drinking beer, you know? Yeah. You know? Didn't yeah. somebody ask you if they could have one while you were on stage the other I was night? like, no, those are for me. <laughs> I mean, I need my water. I mean, who the fuck's going to, like, ask? You're on stage. You're performing. You're, you know? Yeah, like, some girl likes, like, can I have one of those? And they're like, hell yeah. And they're, like, shotgunning it. They're like... You know, Adam's apple to the stars. <laughs> oh God! Yeah. How was how was this past weekend? You were in Ohio. You were in Michigan. Saw a little bit of snow, and you were with Alex Solo. How was, was all that? It was fun, man. Uh, we had a good time. Alex was driving around. Like I don't know, something happened in Michigan, um, and there was like protests going on or something. But like we didn't know that. Alex, we Alex rented this car, and he was like, it had like the push buttons, like park, drive, neutral. And Alex kept pushing, put it in neutral, and revving up the engine. And these people <laughs> were like looking at us, like. It's like a Hyundai Sonata. What do they call those ricers? Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't even there was something wrong with that car. He was just like slamming on the brakes. We stopped at uh on the wet Ohio, we stopped in um something Kentucky, right across the Franklin. Franklin, Kentucky. It's by my house. And we went to the uh we went to the uh, casino, and I was like, he was like, how much are you going to spend? I was like, 300 I'm either going to win or I'm going to lose, and I lost all my money, and he won $1,700. God damn. He gave me my $300 back, and there was a steakhouse in the place, and we had steakhouse dinner. That's and awesome. And then we drove the rest of the way. Um, Friday night was fun in Ohio. Mitch Goshi and um, Adam Recker came out. Nice. So it was fun. They got plastered in the 
Yeah. And the, uh, friends and, the, and family. Friends and family. With the spam. <laughs> Eating spam sandwiches. Yeah. The alcohol goes quick in there. So if you want oh, one, yeah. you better get a drink oh, at 5 yeah. p.m. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I mean, it was it was a good time. I heard people were, you, you had some, some Trey Lewis fans at the hotel y'all were staying at. Oh, yeah. We walked in. We Well, we walked in and I took pictures with like two people there like you're that guy that was saying i was like yeah trey lewis trey lewis trey lewis trey lewis <laughs> remember my you name know? <laughs> you know they they're like dick down in dallas i'm like fucking trey lewis all right <laughs> and uh anyways uh, they had like this little like cubby area where they had like snacks and stuff and this girl goes that's not him he's not that tall and i was like whatever google me bitch and just walked away you know yeah that she's like, like five seven so yeah. she yeah. definitely is, don't believe it's you now we yeah, should, we that's should, right we should do a day where you dress up like tl and you dress up like tv It'd well be dude hysterical. like when we first started going on tour girls thought that McElwain was me yeah i mean it's like no i'm not gonna wear my merch <laughs> like you know I think McElroy only has three shirts. He has the city shirt, he has the rope lettering shirt, and he has a Murphy's Drop Dead Danger well, shirt. And he, he, quit, he quit wearing my hat. He's got the raised ratty hat yeah, on. Yeah, because we gave that one to him. You know, he's he's like you, you give him something to wear. If you're looking for someone to wear your wear your merchandise or wear your brand, give it to Matt McElroy. If you give it to him, he yeah, will he wear, will wear it. it. He, he yeah, I got all these it. Kid Rock shirts. Also, this is really cool. So favorite fishing, they're like a fishing brand. That yeah, I ordered a rod and reel from them. It was like the most expensive one they had. When I went down to Beanville, Dean showed me, and his wife like is on their like fishing team or whatever. Mm-hmm. Well, I ordered the wrong size reel. That's why I hate ordering stuff on the internet. And then, uh, so like I tagged them on my Instagram story, and then I started DMing them. I was like, dude, I ordered the wrong size reel. Like, you know, whatever. They were like, just keep that one. We'll send you one. So they sent me that and a bunch of free shirts. So like, Hell yeah. favorite fishing for life. Baby. That's awesome. Yeah. And I, got, I just got 10 new Stantons in. Yeah, that's nice. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. That's the Lewis. I was running. Yeah. I call that a Lewis, sir. Yeah. That's, Gary that's Stanton something. will whip your ass, dude. I, I know. Watch out. I'm well aware. I spent yeah. a lot of time in a sprinter. He used band. to work you know? for him. He'll, I know. I know he will. Ass. I know he will. But, um, but yeah, um, I got to go back to New York. How was, How was that? that? That was fun. It was good. Surprising my mom. Nobody had any idea. Did your mom stepdad. cry? Or what? Oh, yeah. She cried. Uh, my grandmother cried. Um, and it was good. Just ate a lot of food, but I will say like, I, I'm always going to carry the New York flag, you know, just like you guys are going to carry the Alabama flag, like all that. We're always proud of where we're from, but it's just like, since COVID, like since moving down here, I feel like this is more home than New York. You know, it's like, it's, it's not the same as what it was. Are people was still wearing masks up there? Um, in certain areas. Yeah. It's still, I definitely well, got, we got know how they voted. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah, it's New York, bro. Um, but um, and also just the how expensive things are. Also, the roads are worse up there than they are here. All right, what damn, that's hard to believe. My mind, there were some like potholes, bro, that were crazy. I was well, like, at least you didn't drive your brand new truck up there. I know. I was driving my mom's brand new car, so yeah. I was swerving in and out, trying not to fuck anything up. But um, but no, it was it was good to be up there. And I decided to bring back. Actually, my grandmother gifted these, so shout out to G Unit. Oh, grandma. No. These are like. These are have you ever have you ever seen these? No, I've never. So these are called them. Devil Dogs. No free ads. Drake Cakes out of New York City. They've been around since like the eighteen hundreds. Like, but Trey knew what it was. How'd you know what it was? You I don't know. I mean, it just uh, looks like, a, like looks like a little baby. Just like, hey, sweet boy, sweet boy's gonna have one too. Hey, McElwain, catch, catch that sweet boy. Hey, nice. look at that catch. That was solid. There you go. That's Star my, athletes in here. Man. Win the, That's all we get. You, you, the stick, you, stick, you sticking on the diet? I'm still on the uh, diet, man. See, I like. I used to live like my grandmother used. To, it's one of those things you buy at like Costco or BJ's, and you just get like yeah. a ton of them. They're so, like little debbies, basically. They're like little debbies, but the chocolate Knock is off more little debbies. I don't know about that. It's Drake. Yeah. Where it's do they make little, little debbies at? Little Debbie's, I think they make down down this way, like down south. But this thing right here, should be Trey, for- you would love to eat this, man. Like the way you eat a banana, you could totally. Like, hey, eat wait, this listen, banana. bro. Uh, Alex told on the last. <laughs> hey, we don't pod- talk about that. <laughs> hey, you don't say that. <laughs> you no. don't say that. Alex told us on the last podcast. He was like, "Yeah, Burrell eats his hot right, dogs." This from is the top how I want bottom. y'all to do this. I want y'all to put the whole thing in your mouth. I can't once. play chubby Come bunny on. over here. This do thing, it for the bind. Come on. Thing, this Nobody thing wants to see me. Fuck it. Cheers, bro. Cheers. No whole thing in your mouth. Come on. Nope. Shit is pretty good, though. What does it taste like? You like it, McElwain? You want one? Nah, I can't eat it. You sure? Yeah, dude, I'm good. Nah. Damn, we're going to get fired if you offer it to him one more time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get fired. I think about real. fire and brew every day. It's, Shit, it's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> so are these good. like a New York, do they have like other flavors in oh, New York? Oh, yeah, they've got like ring dings, they've got ho-hos. It's like a got, Twinkie, basically. Yeah. 
It's it's like a Twinkie, like but it's like these are really good frozen too. It's, it's like, like a chocolate. You dip Twinkie. it in like make yeah, but it's like it's like a Twinkie, but it's I'm getting shit all. Or a Swiss touch. roll. It's like a Swiss roll. Yeah, yes, that's what it's it that is. same kind of thing. It's, it's a knockoff Little Debbie, like I said. Where but, do they make Little Debbies? Is it like a Southern real thing? Spitting I'm food spitting everywhere. Food all. I'm that. the messiest eater yeah. on the planet. I was having dude. a conversation with Burrell and Alex yesterday. He just straight up spit in my face while he was talking. I was like, "You missed me, Trey." Violated. So bad. You need, yeah. How does that work? Do you just like wipe it off mid He's Like, no, fuck I you, call bro. him out no, he, this he, time. He, he I'm gets, sick of it. He puts his hand in my face and is like, "Bro, what the fuck, man? You just gonna spit in my face?" Well, it's fine if it like lands up here, but it lands on my lips. I'm like, "God damn, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker." Oh no! You know, y'all going to see Nate Smith tonight? Are you going? I think so. I think I'm gonna pop in. I mean, hell, he's right there. Right, that's awesome. He's literally right below. I meant to text him and tell him, put me on the list. Is it a ticketed event? I don't no, know. It's a free show. But. Dude, I'm going to the Preds game tonight. Are you? Yeah. Who are you going with? Uh, you got mid, a date? Hot no. Date? I'm going with my neighbor. I Mitch. heard you got another date coming up, huh? Potentially. We'll see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Did you talk about that? Like, uh, no. No, nah, you know how I just like to make people feel uncomfortable. Yeah. I asked her to go tonight, and she was like, hey, I've got a friend in town. But yeah. It was nice. Brill, did you get an Easter basket? I did not get an Easter basket this year, and I was kind of salty about it. I got a bunch of other shit, though. Like, I got that box of devil dogs. I got, like, shirts and all kinds of so, other shit. So, uh, for me, it turned out that uh, that I, I got to fly back with Bob and uh, Corey and his security guy from Michigan. So, I got home at, like, I don't know, 1 o'clock. Cody Parks picked me up from the airport, from the small airport, John C. Toon Airport. And um, I don't know. It was it was a uh, it was funny because when we were flying back, Bob was like, "What do you have? Uh, what do you? What are your Easter plans?" I was like, "Oh man, I'm probably just gonna sleep." And everybody in the plane looked at me like they felt bad for me. I was like, "I've been missing holidays for years. Like, yeah. you know, whatever." Was what were they doing for the holiday? Uh, well, his son like lives in town, and oh, they were just awesome. having like an Easter egg hunt and stuff. But um, Kara got home. We you know we hung out or whatever, but. Uh, Corey sent me a message. He was like, man, you want to come over to Bob's? Like, hang out. I was like, man, I might. And then I just fell asleep. And then he texted me. I was like, dude, I'm sorry I fell asleep. But I, we, but it was nice that yeah, they invited they, me. Yeah, you know that is, I mean? That's really cool. I mean, honestly, I probably could have got up and drove home that day, but I just I just wanted to rest because we have a short week. We leave right. tomorrow to go to Kansas. At 10 p.m.? Denver and all that. Yeah, we leaving like, at ten. We're leaving at ten. I love how bus call always changes. Well, yeah, it's a combination yeah. of hey, it'll probably be midnight. Hey, I say it at this time. Then Alex is like, hey, you got to do this time. And then I, I talk to Greg. Greg's like, what about this time? And then I'm like, yeah. all right. And we, then Ben's like, absolutely no. And then, no, Brent, no, no. And then Ben's, Ben's like, like, fuck all y'all. Ben's like, yeah. fuck no. And then yeah, yeah. but no, right, right now we are rolling out ten yeah. o'clock exactly. And so. McElwain just walks from his house. So yeah, we'll go. We're going to the Little Apple, Manhattan, yeah. Kansas. Dude. Yeah, Manhattan, Kansas. Um, Colorado's going to be awesome. Colorado. How much weed are y'all going to smuggle back to Dude, Tennessee? Dude, it's, it's 420 weekend. <laughs> you going to boof it? Shit's on the, sale. The, uh, whatever the, what's the legal, the amount you can buy in a day? We'll buy it the first day or the second day. Colorado has one of those. I, I, think look, they, I think it's like eight grams of concentrate and an ounce a day, I think. Alex bought some in Michigan. He boofed it on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kathleen. Yeah. His cart was really good that I had yesterday. Yeah. It's solid, solid stuff. Um, have you guys made any dumb purchases on the internet yeah. recently? Yeah. Y'all want to know what I bought? Yeah, what's yeah. the shit you bought? I bought a leg lamp the other day. They called me and told me that on Sunday. Like the Christmas story yes. leg lamp? Yes. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I think we might put it in here. Yeah. In here would be. I think we get rid of this stupid guitar. I mean, everybody knows I play music. <laughs> and we get a table and we put the leg lamp And we put lamp the leg up, like, up yeah. in the corner. Yeah. That'd, That'd be, be cool. Yeah. How much do you pay for it? It was only like 300 bucks. <laughs> My credit card's max as fuck. I can't even get Chipotle right now. Yeah. But dude, it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I my dumb purchase. So this was a late night. Let me guess. You bought more butt plugs. No, we don't. We don't. <laughs> I, I need to have a butt plug to buy more butt plugs, so we don't have those. I did buy something stupid, though. I'm going to get roasted for us. So this is a horrible decision in hindsight. Man, I told you not to bring your dildos in here, bro. <laughs> hey, what about that vending machine? Or not vending machine. What was that claw machine in... Uh, Joplin, Missouri, that had the dildos and the vibrators. I don't and the, know if I saw that. Dude, yeah, that was in the corner by merch. They had a, a game, like a claw. They had a flashlight in there, or knockoff flashlight. 
we're not infringing upon anybody's rights here. Uh, they had Jesus. all that. And Terry spent like 10 bucks in there. Kept trying to win. He, he's yeah. like, this is Paxton P. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I spent, ten, I, I, so I got really stoned the other night. Or this was like two weeks ago. And I clicked on something on Instagram that was like, get fit without working out. I'm like, cool. My lazy ass can lose the dad bod. So I ordered these fucking stupid testosterone pills. Oh, God. And I'm like 27. I don't need this shit. That's how you have a kid right there. Yeah, I ordered six. <laughs> I accidentally ordered like six months worth what, what's your latest stupid purchase for? dude i bought that forty five hundred dollar macbook pro and i can't buy anything else my credit card's literally maxed that's not a stupid purchase though. no but that's, i can't buy anything else my credit's it? like max may 19th and i ordered it like three weeks ago oh shit it's never coming in it's like our bus it's never gonna get there <laughs> yeah, yeah and i sent it to my best friend's house you can use mine i mean i bought mine and it uh, it's the M1. It's the most badass thing ever. It just clicks to us. I was talking to Alex. I was like, yeah, or either him or me. He's like, yeah, Trey got that. It makes his TikTok sound great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I have. I mean, I don't ever use it, but I, if I ever have to pull something up, you know, I will. That'll be good, though. Good to know people's out. Yeah, how you feeling? I mean, I, honestly, it did a lot better than I thought it would. Not that I thought it was a bad song. It's just usually like my more serious songs. People don't take them serious, you know, if mm. they want to hear me you know it's like my stupid songs do better if that makes sense but i think it's it's done really well i mean people are posting every day people are listening to it if you haven't checked it out go check it out and um i mean you know and too it came out on a holiday weekend yeah whereas a lot of the dsps the digital streaming or service providers they aren't working at that point they're all yeah, it's on Friday. like a few playlists yeah and stuff, so, so. but i think it'll get more so i'm saying but this is a new goes. development i know that you know because you were in the marketing meeting today mm -hmm. but we're putting out another song on uh mother's day weekend a song i wrote about my mom oh hell yeah whatever she sees in me yeah it's one of my favorites i just did a video um right before this started and posted a video of me and my mom listening to it in the car. It wasn't like it was the first time she heard the recording. You know, we didn't do one of those cringy things like she's never heard it before. I'm playing it for, her, you know, it's like, this is the first time she's ever heard the recording and she cried. It was cool. So that's awesome. You know? Yeah. I I love your, your parents are sick. Like I enjoy hanging out with my, they're sick. Control. They're, they're, <laughs> Oh no. They're, oh no. We gotta go to the hospital. Fuck. We're else fired. <laughs> they are, that's dope. They're dope. They're dope. Your yeah. Wendy and Joel are dope. Um, yeah. and it's, it's always cool hanging out with them. Last night they were, they were an yeah. absolute blast. I heard they were cracking y'all up on the way back. Oh dude. The, I tried. I heard I, Joel was giving you hell. Joe was, Joel was giving me hell. We had to cram in the back of the, in the back seat. So your mother was on Joel's lap and then we had to drop big we had to drop mitch wallace off and then i got McElwain and 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 cape all all hammered having a good time we sat in the white cat i almost got him white castle yeah i came so they were close. like we've had crystal we don't want it well they were they were kind of like that but i'm like this i, I also wanted to see what it would do to McElwain and cape like Why? I you see, already know McElwain shits himself all the time well, i'm saying you shit. Can, well i'm saying like it's a rite of passage <laughs> Sorry, McElwain. like back home we we only eat white cast i only i would only eat it once a year i'd get really mad back in my drinking days i'd get really messed up with my like high school buddies yeah i mean i used to eat get, crystal crystal white white castle same thing i mean it's really no you, different I think white Chris, castle's just a little grosser i think i think you know i yeah. think crystal has more options white castle is pretty much like burger. yeah no yeah. i agree i agree nothing. that's why sliders I, tenders or yeah whatever i mean else. i think yeah. they like white never, castle doesn't have white tenders. castle like never washes their grill but i'll never forget <laughs> one day we were coming like before dick down in dallas me and mitch would leave from nashville and we'd go meet up with matt and terry in birmingham and then drive out to wherever we were going so it was always me, me and mitch coming back from birmingham on sundays or mondays or whatever day we got back and one day we stopped I shared him Milo's, which he fucking loved. My he loves Milo's extra sauce. Yeah, and Jacks. Now y'all like there a lot. Jacks is good. Megan, too. Uh, the Mega Milk. Do you like Milo's? Or? I love Milo's. Yeah, it's, yeah it's only in Alabama. Get the Double O sauce um, and all that shit. I get the Mega Milk combo with a peach pie. Sometimes if I'm feeling really fat, I get an extra you fry. Shake? Extra fry. No, no, their shakes ain't, aren't great. No, Jacks got um, blue bell. Jackson's one day good. I was like, dude, you never had crystals? And then we stopped and we got crystals. And then we got like back on the road. We're eating like our third burger he was like this is pretty gross and i was like you know what this is pretty gross i haven't eaten it since it's Damn. it's a nasty it's not good i still have to do it once yeah it's just not good hey read us one of those dms bro oh, let's oh get it. jesus just All close right. your eyes and pick can, one I, this can, one. I, can i say who they're from i don't think that's a good idea i like this one this, this one right here we got um 
this DM came in like right as Dick Down Dallas was popping off. Um, says, and it was Valentine's Day, so it was like fit. Let's see, the song like came out December that, 1st, yeah. yeah. Said, well, I mean, since it's Valentine's Day, it is literally less than a week away. Here's a poem for your DM Monday. Roses are red, violets aren't fucking blue. This is an actual correct poem. Bottom line, dot, dot, I'd like to fuck you. <laughs> That'd Heart work. emoji and then eggplant emoji. That'd work in my book. That's wild. Yeah. I that's wild. I mean, if a girl said that to you, it's like, let's go. You yeah. Know? I mean, I've I've got one right here. It's a two parter. Have you ever been balls deep in a chick and had her mom or dad walk in? No, I have not. Had some close counters. And then this one's for you because I'm not fucking tall. Yeah. But since you're so tall, do you have a height limit on girls you smash? Kind of like a roller coaster. You got to be a certain height to ride the TL. Not really. I, I mean, I like. You know, I only like one girl now, but yeah, one woman you know, man. I'm a one woman man these days, but I've always liked a woman that you know you can flip around real easy. You know, where in Bonner's case, he likes he likes that's why I work out. That's why I work out. Yeah, he likes being flipped around. That's why I work out. He's jugg- a power bottom. They yeah, juggle, they juggle him. <laughs> this one says, uh, "Everyone is telling me I should give up and be a hoe. I think sliding in your DMs is a good start." Yeah, remember we did that one on Instagram, and yeah. I was like, it's not "That's even, a bad start. That's a terrible start." Like, send tit pics or something. You yeah. know, no, don't really do that in real life, but. You know what I mean. Did, yeah. you, did you guys do this one on the, Let's see. the segments? She probably saved some of these, too. My yeah. ex is oh, getting yeah. out of Craig prison. My ex is getting out of prison next month. It would really piss him off if I fucked you and recorded it and sent it to him. <laughs> she messaged you literally like Look, every day. Look, her picture's right here. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> Dude, she messaged you like every single day for like months, and I think it got to a point where we had to block her because she was sending not very good Yeah, things. she sent something, too, like about like... She wanted you to fuck her mom, too. her and her mom in the same yeah. room. So they're not hot whoa yeah. <laughs> uh, but where, where can people send the dms are we taking them at the tl account or at the trey DM lewis Monday? anywhere you can send them to Text dm Monday. It, wherever trey lewis tell us your dm stories or just uh, send in wild DMs. or just send wild dm stories whatever whatever you want us to say on the podcast if you just want to shit on burrell that's fine too or bonner or, or trey yeah you nobody know, anybody on or mcawin yeah or alex or you're the whatever. you're the vocal point here for i am i am the vocal point for getting shit on yeah. so Colorado, what day? What day um, do we have any over unders on what time we're going to be back? Fuck never. Oh, I think like late Sunday. It'll be fun. Late Sunday. I, I'm thinking midday Monday. I'm thinking fucking Maybe. Tuesday at this I point. I don't know, dude. Mild Greg, he likes to get it done. Well, Mild Greg does like to get it done. How would you describe Mild Greg, Mr. Greg Lowry? Let's talk people? about you shitting on the side of the road. Oh, me motherfucker. <laughs> hey, I'll say this. So after you shit in the side of the road, we stopped at that gas station. And then I shit in the women's, and I was back on the bus before you were even probably had your pants down. I mean, we stopped at that gas station on the side. Yeah. I went in the women's at the same time. No, well, I went on the side of the road. I know. That was at like 8 a.m. It might have even been earlier. It was cold as fuck, dude. It was like 30 degrees. And I asked Greg, I was like up in the jump seat. I was like, yo, Greg, where, like, how far is to the nearest gas station? He was like, man, I don't know. Like, you really got to go. And I'm like, oh, I could probably hold it for 15 minutes. And I found I got like a loves for him. And then like not even two minutes later, I was just like, oh, fuck. And I ran up. I'm like, Greg, I, I got to go. And he's like, what? And I'm like, I got to go. And he literally pulls over. There's no woods. It's just an open field on the side of the fucking road. The Midwest, bum, man. Bum fuck 25 degree Nebraska. And I am out there. No shirt on. I'm in my fucking Crocs. <laughs> I'm, I'm dropping it down, and I, he, he tossed me a roll of toilet paper out. And he's just laughing I at was you. Like, and he started slowly pulling away. Well, you're trying to get back in? Yeah, or, I'm, like, or, I'm, like, I'm like, take care of business, <laughs> and fucking Greg's starting to go, and he's just, I hear him laughing his ass off. I'm like, this motherfucker. I would say, it felt like old, that probably felt like old times, though, because I remember like plenty of times McElwain or somebody had to go, and so we just pull over and like have a group pee on the side oh, of the, the highway, be- though. The, 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 be- the best was the, the hungover pee. Euchre's Club on I'll Sundays coming back we were, the van. We were coming back from somewhere. I mean, it was like a, one of those, like, we like were in North the Carolina van. Mud bogs. And it was like a long ride, and we got to Lebanon, and I shit my pants. Like, yeah, I, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. I, it I might just, have been the North Carolina Mud to, Bog. 
I tried to fart and I just shit like right through my sweatpants onto the seat and everybody was just like we were about to like you know we were we were in Lebanon where Mitch lives like we were we were almost to the finish line and we had to stop so I could go cut my underwear off and throw them away <laughs> why did you yeah. just take it off no yeah and it, 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 it had to get all of your feet bro and it had a stain on the seat and I remember looking at that I'm like fuck I gotta clean this up on Monday <laughs> dude I had a video shoot with Nick Haynes December 22nd and I was on my way there and it was right after we played iron city and i think you were also not feeling super great after that and i was like i breathed wrong and i just shit myself so i had to call him like hey man i'll be like 10 minutes late i went in the berry hill walmart bought some shorts took my fucking whole ass pants off threw them in the trash nice that's brutal god mm. bless god bless walmart for that i've had some moments what like about that uh too. burrell's shoes i heard he got new shoes i did i did look at these new nikes nikes, nikes baby they're clean they'll probably was be, like 50 bucks on amazon they were like 70 bucks at dick sporting goods he got so ripped off they're good i mean they're, they're they get the job done i'm not a sneaker head at all i'm I, sorry i don't have a collection of fucking Takovas boots over here yeah, but man. i don't yeah. got i don't got Takovas fuck you Do they smell bad these, they, these don't smell bad yet so i've only had them for about five days but i'd give it about three months and we're probably gonna have to get a new pair so that's why i buy light because i'm, I'm pretty rough on shoes too i am too they i don't know last more than like oh, three months you were me. pissed the other day like when we were in the bus and yeah. you were like really you gotta do something about those damn shoes we gotta Dude, we gotta Burrell's burn them in a fire smell awful. we gotta burn them in a fire i'm telling you those boots for real don't you bring them in this bus yeah like the new rule is is that when you get before you get on the bus you just gotta put your uh boots in the bay what, the bay yeah, yeah i'm thinking i gotta get new boots Boots in the bay for real what uh you gotta put that on when every you go to day critter's sheet. house is you just fuck yeah, with like your shoes up. Yeah, how do you up? get laid with your feet smelling She's like, that God, well, that, well, I'm also not running around like it's that. new Wheeler song. I'm going to fuck you with my boots on. <laughs> and how about know. that new Wheeler record? That's like like great. Yeah, yeah. He, he just did with uh, Joshua Ray uh, Walker, That's which awesome. was cool, yeah. too. Um, so before he disgraced the I, uh, you know, he did it before <laughs> I did. I hope he got pictures of him, him there. Huh? I hope there's pictures of him there yeah, for sure. that you can't take pictures in there. Yeah, what I do is, I mean, I'll know if they do smell. And sometimes I'm with I'm with you guys, and I'm like, fuck these guys. I'm just gonna, I know my yeah, suit stink, like, and I'm going to let them stink. Do you stink. just, like, go to a girl's tub and start washing your feet? When I'm you know, no, How does it no, work? no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> what I do, yeah, that was a horrible, no, no, no. Uh, that's the new one. Instead of, like, the this, it's the, 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 the. Um, <laughs> fuck y'all. Yeah. Um, I um usually like on a regular day they don't smell, but okay. when I'm running when around, running and, around. When I'm running around in tour manager mode, working I'm, harder than anybody in the crew. I don't know about that. Stress it harder. McElwain works the hardest. I mean, hell, he gets us ten I'm, grand the show. I'm I'm just saying. <laughs> I know we give Burrell a lot of shit, but he really does work hard for us. But that's why my feet are always yeah, stinking. Yeah, yeah. Word of the week in the floor. Put it in the floor. Yeah, what put is that? Mean, Kara was Kara, saying Kara that was yesterday. Giving me shit. She was saying that. And I was She's like, like, put my phone in the floor. Yeah, I put my phone in the floor. Look at the floor. There's the floor. Like. What does that I remember mean? the first time I heard somebody say "put it in the floor." I, I thought it was the most ridiculous thing ever. Now you say, but it. it's been like ten or fifteen years since I heard that, so I just kind of adopted it and started What, is, using what does it, it mean? What? Just put it on the floor, like on the floor. Just no. put it in the floor. <laughs> put it in the floor. Yeah, like the floor is like a hole. Like put yeah. it in. The floor like, is like putting something in the glove box. You know? Yeah, that's, that's you open it, you close it. You're putting yeah. it in there. The floor. You're just what are you just dropping? I mean, I guess you drop. Like, it, it doesn't make pissed. sense, but it's it's no, it pretty doesn't. cool to say. What's the other one? Need one? Was that you that put that uh, one? No, on like I need a word of the week. Somebody uh, put yeah. one in there. Oh, I thought need one. <laughs> yeah, I mean DM us some word of the weeks too if you want to. Oh, um, maybe could. What? I maybe could do that. Maybe could. That's I've, not even a sentence. I've heard what the people, fuck? I've heard people say maybe could. That's fucked. I actually got a DM about that. Like someone was asking me. Someone you was saying you maybe could. Maybe they just forgot the comma. The comma. That's it. No, they were saying Sorry, that maybe high could. school drop out here. <laughs> GED. GED. Good enough <laughs> diploma. There you go. I'm doing all right. Yeah, for sure. You're yeah. the one with the boots on. I'm the one with yeah, the Yeah, I'm about to have feet. to pay a lot of taxes. So yeah. What's did, that? You, did, did you have to pay a lot of taxes? Oh, yeah. Yep, we're paying them quarterly next What'd year. What'd you pay, like four grand? Um, It came out, I think, like right around five. Damn. What about you, Boner? Uh, it was pretty high. It was like closer to 10. It might have been eight. <laughs> Damn, y'all got to get with Alex and Rachel and just get y'all to hook. Like, I got I got my old school it. New York account. I got a really good accountant as well. But the, the guy, Apparently the, not. <laughs> like, well, the guy, I mean, I do want to find someone that's down here because it's so, he, up there they're used to doing like, 
like 1099 is not really a thing in New York. Yeah. There is a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes, I'm sure, where the yeah. people do make a lot of money up there. Where they're, I guess we just need to pay y'all more than minimum wage around here. <laughs> Speaking of guys that work really hard and have been doing this music thing for a minute, we got a hell of a guest today, dude. Yeah, dude, this is really cool. You know, I mean, I haven't like reached out to, you know, like any, like, you know, like a high profile guest, I guess, or mm. whatever. And I'm just like, whatever, I'll just get my friends on here. This is for me to have fun and build my brand, you know, and what we're doing. Um, but uh, this guy, Craig Campbell, he's coming on today. He reached out to me. He's like, dude, put me on the podcast. And I was like, fuck yeah. Like, I've seen that guy in concert like twice. Like, I grew up listening to his music. Did you cover his songs? Uh, I don't think I ever him? covered his songs. Really? Um, but I know that like when Gary and Charlie Muscadine Bloodline were like really starting to blow up, kind of shifting from covers to original music. I remember them uh, covering uh, Outskirts of Heaven. Yeah. It was like when that song was like really big. And then I know like you worked in radio, you interviewed him, didn't you? I got to, we did a, our, the station I was with did a show with him yeah. and I got to hang out with yeah. him and his guys after the show and I learned how country music singers get down. So yeah. we'll have to see if he remembers that up in yeah. New Jersey. But I mean, I mean, that guy crushes it, you know, he's, I'm excited to talk to him about, you know, um, being on record label versus being independent because now he's independent and, you know, he does a really good job and he's just, you know, I've, I've, I haven't hung out with him much, but you know, we've met a few times and I know McKinney's been on the road with him to write. Yeah. And he's done tours from headlining his own stuff now to headlining his old, st his own stuff back in the day to being on the road with Luke Bryan, being on the yeah. road with Al Dean. Like he's done all kinds of tours, festivals, like you name it in country music over the last 15, 20 years. I mean, he's he's done it. Literally a guy that's done it all. Yeah. And he, everything. And he works hard and you know, he puts out, he still puts out great music, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Here's our conversation with Craig Campbell. All right, folks, we have a uh, our probably most famous guest today that we've ever had. Um, well, I've, I've definitely seen him in concert twice in my life. I uh, grew up listening to his music. Everybody welcome Craig Campbell. Yo. Wait, the Craig Campbell. The Craig Campbell. Yeah. Hey. hey. Thanks for coming, bro. Well, that, you know, that people people make fun of the whole the Craig Campbell, but I, I started that because when I, first, when I got to town, um, I <laughs> – uh, I signed up for that Nashville Star. It was yeah. a show that was that they had a while back. Chris and, Young uh, was on that. Chris right? Young was. Miranda was on it. Yeah, Miranda was on it like the first year. Yeah, she got second. Um, which kids, you don't always have to win. Yeah, uh, but um, so I, I went out for that Nashville Star, and the lady there, I made it like past the first round to the second. And anyways, Tracy Gershon, I remember she was she was part of the whole three person panel, you know, and she was like. You know, there's another Craig Campbell that works in the music business. I said, no, I did not. F fast forward a little bit. We, we, Me and this guy became buddies through another guy. And uh, so I got his phone number. So for over the course of five or six years, I would get phone calls for him. And he'd get phone calls for me. Random shit, too. Like, like I got a call one night from – from because uh, he's a publicist. Yeah. I got a call from John Rich. And John said, hey, I said, hey, I ain't doing no TV interviews. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll do the audio, but I'm not doing no TV. I said, do you know who you talking to? <laughs> he said, who is this? I said, this is Craig Campbell, the, the singer. He said, oh, let me call you later. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> Phone call was over. And he'd get calls from me. My wife called him one time, told him to pick up some damn milk and eggs or something. On, and he said, who's this? He said, this is your wife. And she, he said, no, it's not. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. So, uh, that, and, but then, too, he would get phone calls. He'd get text messages about doing singing demo. Yeah. Like, hey, you available to sing a song? And I finally just said, man, here's my calendar. If I'm open, book it. Yeah. Book it. Here's my rate. So yeah, the Did Craig you, Campbell. So all of that to just say I'm yeah, the Craig Campbell. Yeah. Did you um sing on a lot of demos like oh, when you man. first moved to town or what? Man, I was singing so many demos. I was singing so many demos that when I signed my record deal, they 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 told me I had to stop. Yeah. And then I said, well, I'm making a lot of money. Is that yeah. like a thing now? Do people still like? Is there still demo I, singers? I, I think they are. There are to some of the 
some of the older older school songwriters that are still kind of just writing songs and, and yeah. needing to get them demoed. Uh, but you know, these days it's you 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 write with the writer yeah. or write with the with the artist, the artist or and the track you, guy or whatever. Yeah, and then there's a track guy, and you leave that day, and by the end of the day, you have a you demo song. that sounds yeah. as good as a man. It ain't like it sometimes. was, man. I'm, I was singing, man. I was singing three or four a day. What years was that? Like what so, years we had up here? So I moved up here in '02. I play. I started playing piano for Luke uh, Brian about '04, and that's so. That's about when my first my demo singing took off nice how did you uh how did you meet luke see i don't know any of this stuff i need to need to dig deeper <laughs> i gave you, you the damn here. note sheet you gave, <laughs> you the, my you gave me the one sheet <laughs> bro. yeah no um mutual friends um i we had a buddy named galen griffin songwriter i knew from before i moved here he was writing songs uh and hanging out with luke and and uh, this was before luke signed his deal and yeah and uh luke he told me he came to me one day he said hey man i think luke's looking for a piano player do you are you interested? He said, I think you'll like this guy. He's a Georgia boy. He's you know you'll you'll hit it off pretty good. I bet. And I said, Yeah, give me my give him my number. They should and, put you in the damn documentary. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, it's, was it weird watching that doc? Have you watched that documentary? I have watched that documentary. I'm like, oh man, if I'd have just stuck it out for a little bit longer, yeah, I'd, I'd be in this document. But no, yeah. it's <laughs> it's all good. You know, he he Luke has been very good to me. We could trace everything back. You know how some this when the seed gets planted, the tree grows. But if you take all these branches and tra- chase it back down to the to the, to the seed, that's probably when I, when Luke introduced me to John Mabe. Yeah, John Mabe said, "Hey, my wife needs a demo singer for a song she just wrote. Will you do it?" And I said, "Hell yeah, I'll do it." Yeah. It's my, so my very first paid demo was from a song Connie Harrington wrote. That's great. Yeah. It's awesome. So, yeah, I mean, that seed, that's when it all planted. So, so, so you've been to Statesboro, Georgia, then, if you were with Luke Bryan. Well, I'm, from, I'm actually from Tombs County, Georgia, which is 45 minutes from from Statesboro. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, I grew Statesboro up. Statesboro holds a special special place yeah, in all of our yeah, hearts. It's, I mean, that's, that's <laughs> many, many uh, UGA. Like, everybody says they can party at UGA. Georgia Southern can get down to. That's oh, yeah. a fact. Dude, we love Georgia Southern. We love <laughs> Statesboro. It's good. That was like, there's a place there now. It's called the Blue Room. I don't know yeah. what it was called back in the day. But to me, it's like, it's like I mean, there's like, was it, is it G-Nats? Is that what it's called? Nats. Or Nats. Nats Landing. Yeah, Nats Landing. Like, that's a bar, but like, I see that more as of like a restaurant. Yeah, it is. But like, Blue Room, like, I'll never forget the first time we ever played there. We played, this is back when we were playing covers. We played in Tuscaloosa, and then we drove all through the night, and we got there, and we had to play like a frat party from like two to four or something. And the <laughs> blistering sun, it paid yeah. like three hundred fifty bucks, and I was just thinking, man, fuck, I don't know how I'm gonna like make it through the night, you know? Right. And we walk into the blue room, and it's just like the energy of that place. The stage was nice, like the PA, and then all these drunk college kids getting there and they're ready to fucking throw down and even still to this day i've done some cool stuff right now i'm on tour with kid rock yeah. and like you know we've been playing you know big ass arenas and but still to this day i mean it all all the shit we did last year the energy in that room is just unmatched i have not played the blue room yet yeah uh I, there's a bunch of but i early on before i signed a record deal i played um down uh, i can't remember the name of the place but nathan queen owned it um it was it was a good night it was a good night but yeah i was doing it was back same you know doing covers back then yeah i'd love to go back but man i just i have a hard time playing near my hometown i can't i can't get my hometown fired up about nothing yeah. really the last, that's a fact it's interesting the last place you make it is in your hometown dude my, they say. i feel like my hometown don't give a shit yeah maybe because there's just too many people in, uh, coming out of Georgia that play music. Is I don't that know. What it is? But it's crazy because, you know, we we can go, I can go to where my my wife is from, and my wife is also a singer, and she moved to Nashville to be, to pursue music. Um, so she's, she's kind of the same deal, but from Colorado, mm-hmm. um, hometown. So, but when we go back to her hometown, it's so, sold out every time. Yeah. Uh, so you're a big Bulldogs fan. Yeah. Yeah. Roll Tide. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, McK- get, McKinney you, said, "Let us uh, have it. Let us yeah, have no, it. No, no, for let you a little it. while. I'm going to let you while. have it, dude. I mean, <laughs> I love Kirby Smart. I mean, yeah, he's Kirby is like 
I mean, he's right there next to Saban for me. He's like, he's a great coach. He's, I mean, he's just. I so when y'all won, I couldn't couldn't be mad about it. But, no, you know, it, and it was yeah, it was one of those things too. I was like, you know, I, when we lost to Alabama in the regular, or the yeah, the regular season, I was like, you know what? I think Kirby has a has a chance at if we get to face him again. I think it's oh, hard. Yeah. It's hard to beat. It's hard to beat the team twice. twice yeah. 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 Yeah, and to see the Braves win this past year, like it's a, it was a good year to be a Georgia sports fan. The best part, finally of, ending the dude. Curse. The best part about that was just the whole bullshit uh, moving the All Star game. Yeah, oh Man, yeah, they, they screwed like, you all over. Like, come and t- get it. Come McKinney, and get it. McKinney said uh, y'all called the dogs at one of your shows somewhere <laughs> recently. Did. No, well he we didn't, but he thought oh, when he I, thought y'all when were. I called him up on stage he. Because I had just said go dogs, you know, yeah. and he thought I was. I said no, I'm not going to do that. That's mean. Because we were in Lexington, I think. Yeah, yeah and he was. I'm, I'm not going to do that. But I did let him know. I said, yeah, you know, I said same thing. I said just you let us have this for a minute. <laughs> I said, uh, you, good thing is y'all got basketball. And then I said, oh, but wait a minute. How far did y'all make it in the <laughs> how many 16? Bo- how many boos oh. did you get that Man, night? it was bad. Yeah. It was bad. But I said, so I love it, Tonight, dude. shut up. Yeah, that's great. But, uh, yeah, so he got McKinney up and they went to sing Dick Down. And McKinney said. He's cursed, dude. It was so good. Yeah. Hell yeah. It was so good. You were like, and I'm going to play piano. <laughs> I did. <Yeah. laughs> you played piano on I it? I did. Hell just like yeah. the demo. Yeah, just like the, the original demo. of The, the original demo I was I have not heard it. I got to no, send it to you. Uh, so, it's like a ballad. It's pretty bad. Uh-uh. <laughs> Is it? I can't wait to hear yeah, it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. We'll send it to you. That's great. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so McKinney, he was freaking out. I mean, he talked about that for weeks. You know, just because like, you know, I feel like sometimes when you're a writer of a song, you know, you don't get to go out and tour that song every night, so you don't know what the reaction is. I mean, right. of course, like when it first popped off, all my friends were coming to every show, but you know, here we are, almost two years later, and you know, people are still singing that. That's crazy. It, yeah, and uh, the first night I, I got him up, it was perfect. You know, it was a it was a, a music venue, like it was a hall, and then the next night was a was a theater, and I about halfway into the first chorus, I said, "Oh man." I don't know how these guys are going to receive it. It definitely ain't going to be like it was last night. But they, it was great. It was great. They did. They, uh, they soaked it all in. I don't know if you know this or not, but I sang that song at the Ryman last night. Did you? <laughs> Funny story. I'm, I it want you good. to tell me about it. But uh, Fish was on yeah. the radio, and I had I had not sang it at the opera yet. So when it was on the radio, I said I'm going to sing Fish at the opera. Mm-hmm. A couple weeks later, I get my first piece of hate mail. Dang. She said, I was a fan of yours. I love Family Man. I brought my kids to see you at the Opry, and then you play that filth. (laughs) That (laughs) filth. Yeah, that filth. And I said, oh, man, I'm I'm sorry you feel that. I didn't write her back. I was just thinking. Yeah. I, I, I think it's a good song. It's all I about where your head's song. at right. when you're listening so to this. So I song. saw you play at uh, Tin Roof Birmingham. It's got to be like four or five years ago, and it was just so many people. It was outside. There was just so many people in there. But I remember when you played Fish, the whole place just yeah. went crazy. It's still one of them songs that you know I, I I can be two songs into my set and be like Fish. I'm I like, saw the uh, oh TikTok you made where you're like, it's not about fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it just kept going on and on. Well, because I mean, I get asked all the time, "Is hey, is hey, man?" Let's, you can tell me. We could be honest. The song's about fucking ain't. It's like, come on, man. Like, you should brain. You know what like, the song's no. about. Like, go watch the video. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, but I mean, it's did a you, fun song. Did you write that song? I did. I did. I, I, but I, yeah, I got to give credit to the to the, my co writer Arlos. He he had the idea as soon as he walked in. He was bouncing off the walls. He and he just had. And I said, man, that ain't gonna work. Yeah. Ain't nobody gonna. You know. And he said. He just wouldn't let it go. So then we we just chiseled and chiseled, and finally, when we were done, I said, "I think this is a pretty good song." I said, "At the very least, we we'll, we can uh, play it live, just have a good fun live show song." And and so I did. I started doing that, and people just started asking for it. So yeah. we, we was just, fish was fish your second song? In retrospect, probably wasn't the best song to follow Family Man with. Mm-hmm. You know, because I had just been introduced to the country music world as Family Man, and here I come with a song that a lot of people thought was about 
So yeah, else. radio worlds is is a hard game. Something I hadn't, you know. I mean, I haven't done. I'm still independent, but like as an independent, I think that I like putting out whatever I want to. Like that's the beauty. I put out like single again, and then like I just put I put out another song, and then I put out that was you know uh, more serious. And then I put out a song about, you know, with my buddy Alex Maxwell. It's kind of serious. And then now I'm about to put out a song about my mom. And then right after that, I'm going to follow it up with something. People are going to be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> is he bipolar or yeah. what? For like, sure he is. That's the coolest thing about being independent. You know, it's like just giving fans what they want. Wouldn't you? I mean, I was kind of wondering, like, you know, you've done both. Right. You know? I've, you know, got, was able, been blessed, you know, to be able to have some songs on the radio and do, and do well and, uh, but I will say it's very, very frustrating uh, when you're signed to a record label because they they essentially they own your voice, your recordings. You mm-hmm. can't can't do anything without their permission. Yeah. And you know the whole time I was with Broken Bow, I had no. I, I, we put out three singles, and then finally, finally in 2018, I said, "Guys, let me put something out other than something to the radio." Uh, so we put out that EP. So there was a. And even from the EP to to when I released uh, "It's About Time" in twenty twenty, it was it was you know a, a good span of dead space, and I, that was the first thing I told when when we decided to go independent. I said, "We're gonna put songs out once a, every six weeks, yeah, two if months. Yeah, if you're right, let's if you're, go. If you're writing them all the time, then you don't want to just be sitting there. I'm with about them. to put yeah. out. I'm about to put out a record, and it's called "The Forgotten." And it's all of the songs that I cut at these record labels yeah. that they wouldn't let me put out. Did you just go in and recut them, or did no? You have to the, I took the masters. They with them. The yeah, yeah, they let me have awesome. them. That's awesome. That was the 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 right thing for them to do. Yeah, uh, that song "Just Me Missing" is it called "Missing You"? Yeah, "Me Missing You." That was that was an independent release, right? No, dude. Let me tell you, dude. I thought that song was a number one. Like, let me tell you bonafide. something. "Me Missing You." Let me. T- fr- this is the frustration with a record label. So when I first signed with Broken Bow, I had um, I had a record, yeah, that I was bringing from Bigger Picture. They didn't like it; thought it was garbage. I said, "Okay." I said, "Well, let's go cut some songs." So they we we all came together. We just started chit, you know, finding songs, looking for songs. I found two songs that I didn't write. Mm-hmm. Me missing you was one of them, and another song I'll tell you the title in a second. All right. Six songs total we cut. Two of them I wrote. The president of the record label, he said, when we got them back. And the two that I found, even over the ones that I wrote, I loved and I thought were the best. And they came out. They turned out great. He said, I don't want you playing these songs for nobody. You can't play them for the, the radio promotions team. We can't, we're not playing them for anybody here at the record label. Just, I said, that don't make any sense. Okay. Fast forward a couple of years, I get a phone call from a guy that I was working with, uh, Mickey Jack. He said, hey, man, didn't you cut a song called Yours If You Want It? I said, yeah, I did. He said, I just heard it on the radio. I said, no kidding. He said, yep. It's the world premiere of the new Rascal Flat song, Yours If You Want It. I Damn. said, uh-uh. So I went and listened to it. and They cut a very good version of it. But man, mine is really good, too. You yeah. know, and, I, and it went to number one. Granted, it's it's Rascal Flats. You know, they they have a uh, a legacy and it's, you know good songs. Yeah. But then fast forward a little bit further, we put out the EP. No promotion, no playlists. Yeah, no, no playlists. nothing. No. Me missing you start streaming a million a month on Spotify that's by awesome. itself. By then, back then, that's a that's, that's a, a lot of stream. That's, that's ridiculous. Lot, that's yeah. insane. And I picked it. And I, and dude, I, I was him. driving my ex wife's Ford Focus when I heard that song. I was like, this thing is a banger, dude. Yeah, I think it still is, man. As a matter of fact, we're trying to buy that little EP back from Broken Bow um, just for you know for outskirts and for for me missing you because my re record won't be up for another. Well, she it might be. I might just wait. It's up in another year. Yeah, I re record it. Yeah, fuck it, fuck yeah. them, just do it. It's a hit. It is, hit. dude. I mean, it's 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 sitting at fourteen million, fifteen million streams with nothing, no help, no help. That's great. Those are all Trey, probably. So here's my question. <laughs> yeah, it's all Trey. Just I'll take it. Well, I was broken, but I was making all that money. Yeah. So here's my question. 
I, I struggle with it a lot. You know, it's like sometimes, you know, like, I mean, having, of course, like having songs on the radio, you know, it's always been a dream of mine from, you know, since I was, can remember wanting to do music, right. you know? So it's like, I mean, I think I even have friends that are on major labels and it's like the that creative control is like such a big thing. It's like, even if you do have creative control at your label, you're still freaking out. You're still putting shit in their hands. You know what I mean? Would you do it again? Like if you had the right, you know. Oh yeah, no, I, I absolutely deal, would. You, it would, would. Yeah. Just because I mean, I know more about how I want. Yeah. How I want it yeah. to go. If I put out a song and it pops, and and somebody comes to me and says, "Hey, we want to we want to partner up," I'll say, "Let's go." But here's Let's what go. I gotta yeah. have. Yeah. That's kind of and it's going to be in black and white. There's no going to be none of this, just you know, gray. Oh, but we meant this. No, mm -mm. Mm -mm. we're doing this, or I'm out. Right. Yeah. Um, Sue me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 But no, I would. I would just because. I mean, the the love or the desire to have a hit at country radio is still deep inside of me, and it it burns. Yeah. Um, I've never had a number one song, so I'm I'm still. It's you like had a one number of the, two though, right? Mm -mm. Where did where did Outskirts do? Outskirts went to twenty four. Yeah, "Keep Them Kisses Coming" was my highest charting song. It went to seven, but so that desire's there. Just one number one song, you know. Yeah. As as an artist, um, I'm sure that'll lead to wanting another one. But I just would love to ring that bell. Yeah. And at the at this present moment, I mean, it's it's hard to do independently. Yeah, you know, it's very expensive. Yeah. Um, yeah, if I get a number one on iTunes, I'm like, fuck everybody, I did it. You know, because <laughs> like when Dick Down in Dallas came out, you know, I heard a lot of, and I'm sure you heard it, people, you know, talked about, you know, oh, that guy made himself a one hit wonder, you know, career, like, you know, all that stuff. And then single again went number one on iTunes. So everybody can lick my butt. That's right. That, that's know? right. And that's, so it's and like, that's, that's in me too. I yeah. want to, I want to have something pop that I can just turn around and say, you know what? All of you guys. Yeah. Lick my butt. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. I think you deserve it, man. So let's talk about uh Outskirts of Heaven. So I'll it was probably um twenty sixteen Muscadine Bloodline. They were like we all played the same bars in Alabama and they started they moved to Nashville. I don't know. When did they move? About twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen, yeah. There. They moved up here and they were kinda like starting to like transition from like cover to um, cover world to like you know playing originals yeah. and Outskirts came out when 2016 2016 yeah. so that song was like massive huge but the first time I ever heard it was uh, them covering it at a show I opened for them in Birmingham it sold out they were doing it in a sound check I was like what the fuck is this <laughs> this is great <laughs> yeah and uh, I don't know dude I used to listen I used to work at Bradford which is a treatment center in Alabama for drug and alcohol addiction I listen to that song like fucking every day on my way to work it's just so good dude um, but um, I noticed like on uh, on TikTok one day that Warren Z is it Ziders or Ziders? I think Ziders. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He was uh, covering it, and people thought it was like his song, you know. I Which is why you got involved with it, right? Because I know you well, guys put up a video where you walked down the stairs with him, like you did well, some content with him. He, uh, I reached out to him because I saw because it went that that particular video went viral, and I said, "Hey, I'm playing in Pennsylvania. I'd love for you to come to yeah. the show and get up." Anyways, that show got canceled for COVID. Uh, and then he reached back out to me and said, "Hey, man, uh, the fans." want to hear the full version of it can i cut it i said hell yeah um i said if you'll let i'd love to produce it on you he said like well i don't know much about that he's you know let's yeah. go yeah so i went in and played guitars and and sang harmony with him um cut his vocal over at bart's and um and he was like dude thank you so much for letting me do this i said man look i did everything i possibly could with this song uh, a lot of my fans have heard it yeah, a lot of radio people that listen to country radio have heard it, but there's a there, you you have a fan base that hasn't heard this song, and I said I don't care who sings it, yeah. I think this song needs to be heard. And uh, yeah, that dude it, streams like ten million a week. It's bro. crazy. I mean, he's crazy. It is. It. Yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well. He's. Uh, I don't know him personally or anything, but I just he's a good dude, he man, and, and he's super talented. Like you know, just like you, what you hear 
what you hear on his videos, that's exactly how he sounds yeah. in in person. And his pitch is always on, and he just and he's motivated. He's hungry. And what was that like for you getting in the studio and recreating that song? It was interesting, you know, because like I've been singing it. Well, in, that yeah, that's yeah, just interesting because I've been singing it for up to that point five and a half years, solid every almost yeah. every night, and I, just almost on re, auto autopilot kind of thing. Yeah, but then hearing another completely different take on it uh it was like man that's it's way different than how i would have done it yeah or how i've been doing it yeah but it's awesome yeah so but yeah to see it come back to life like that um and and know that a new audience is getting to hear it a, a second wind if you will that mm -hmm. was it's pretty awesome that's great hopefully it was that funny to radio funny too that you bring it up like about it being a Warren Zider song. Now people yeah. when I get when I get done at night, I go back and kinda of sign at the merch table. Yeah. Man, you sang that Warren Zider song pretty good. <laughs> Shit. That's great. Yeah. How demoralizing is yeah. that? No, I'm like <laughs> I know I do. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. <laughs> at, your, at your own show. Yeah, yeah, man. Thanks. I know I do. Yeah. I had somebody come up to me uh one night and they said, Man, you're a great bass player. And I was like, Oh, thanks. What? <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess they just didn't know it was me on the I guess they were just so hammered, you know. Some of these bars you play in. Back up, back up. Tell me about playing Dick Down at the Ryman. Tell talk, talk oh, to man, me. Oh man, it was great, dude. Um so uh Kid Rock. I call him Bob now. He doesn't like to be called Kid <laughs> yeah, Rock. Yeah, he's you Bob, know? Bob Kid Bob Bob, Bob Richie. Bob, Bob Bob, yeah. Um so um I don't remember what it was, but he told me he was doing a comedy show. It's comedy week here in Nashville. Tell me he's doing a comedy show at the Ryman. I was like, dude, that's cool. I was like, dude, my goal is one day to play the Ryman. Of course, the Opry's like on my checklist. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I was like, I just, I just don't. I gotta have a different song. I will never be able to play that song at the, you know, at the Ryman. He was like, fuck it, just come play it at my show. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, dude, that'd be cool. And then like that was when I went to go meet him. Like before we went on tour, he was like, I want to meet you. Came out to his house, hung out. Like, I'll never forget. I was in my bed, and I have a message. He's like, hey, man, this is Ken Rock. And I'm like, what the fuck is life? Somebody you know? playing a joke. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is this real life? And then I came over that Sunday morning, and he told me about that. And I was just like, you know how people say shit sometimes? You don't want to, like, you know, I feel like this music industry, there's so much, like, let down and stuff. You can't take what 100%. people say for, for you know, value. You just kind of have to let things happen. So I was just like, yeah, man, that'd be cool. Like, just trying to play it off. Like, I'm in fucking Kid Rock's house. Like, what the fuck? You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And then uh, my manager got a message from Corey, which is his, like, day-to-day. -day. And uh, he was like, yeah, Bob wants Trey to play the, play this thing at the Ryman. So Comedy like, jam. Come on, let's Comedy go. Jam. I was like, I'm down. And then so Saturday night we played Michigan, and I was able to fly back with Bob. And his jet says American Badass on the side. <laughs> of course He's it does. He's about to get two middle fingers put on the, <laughs> on the back. And uh, I don't know. We just had a talk with his manager, Ken, and, and uh, we decided that I would just have my guitar player come sing harmonies with me and play, like, acoustic lead. And uh, I don't know. We got there. We sound checked, and then we went upstairs, and uh, – I walked into uh, – Bob called me in his dressing room, and I shook Zach Brown's hand. <laughs> and we sat there like it was normal. My mom and stepdad came back there and introduced him to Bob. And then I got up there, and I sang it. And, and the thing with, like, playing, going and playing for his fans every night, it's like some people know the song, but some people don't. And some people are like, Ugh. you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's weird. Um you know how that is. When yeah. You're, you know, it's, it's not. It's like I'm not opening for Kid Rock. I'm coming out during his set, like right after picture and singing "Dick Down in Dallas." Oh, really? With his with his band. <laughs> oh, okay. So you're you're not like support. It's, yeah. It's just you're just yeah, featured. I'm just, I'm just featured coming out. Man, that's set, actually kind of cool. It's I mean, cool. Yeah. The full crowd's always there in the arena. Like it's yes, middle of even the better, show. dude. It's prime even time. Yeah, yeah, it's prime time. So. But yeah, I mean, we. I didn't know if this crowd was going to know the song or not, but of course they did, and like. They just like the whole entire Ryman. Like my first show at the Ryman, I saw Jamie Johnson. Yeah. It's like Terry Clark. It was like a bunch of people. And then the second show I saw at the Ryman ever was uh, Chris Stapleton and Jason Isabel. And then, you know, I'm up there. You know, I mean, the Ryman's a special place. Dude. Yeah, of course it is. And that's stuff that, you know, you only dream about. And it's like 
you know, two years ago, I had a fucking mattress on the floor and a rubber made underwear drawer for <laughs> for a yeah. side table and a, and to keep my clothes in. And that's all I had. And it's like, you know, I don't know. It's just one of those moments where I just wanted to soak it in and just enjoy the moment. But it was cool. Everybody was singing along. Man, that's great. We walked off and then I sat side stage with Bob and his uh, fiance, I think. And, um, and Zach Brown sitting next to me and mm-hmm. just watched like Theo Vaughn and all this comedians just like tell stories, man. It was crazy. And then we went to like the after party and yeah, it was just, it was crazy. No, I bet. I bet. Yeah, yeah man. Soak it in, dude. Just soak it yeah, in. Love, that's that's my it. thing. Like last year we did a bunch of shows and I, like even when we did like the big shows, I would be like, I would be on stage and the fear that I would be in is like, God, I hope I get to do this again. So like this year, I'm like, fuck it. I'm just going to enjoy this shit. <laughs> right. Because like right. the truth is, man, it's like God's in control of all this. And we don't know, you know, we don't, you know, he's always got us. We're, I know for me, I can, it's easier for me to be negative than it is to be positive, you know? And I can just be like, oh, this is all going to end. Oh, tomorrow. it's easy. You know? Man, it's so easy, especially in the music business. It'll, yeah. it'll chew you up and yeah. spit you out. That's the reason... They have therapists for the yeah. music for free. Yeah, for free. I pay mine, but I go see her once a month. Yeah, I mean it's, but it's available because yeah. they know, man. This it'll tear you down, man. Yeah. And put well, you in I mean, dark it's, spaces. You're, you're in a constant state of be, being told you're not good enough, or like you know it's not the right stuff or whatever. So you're constantly having to recreate yourself, redefine, dig back in, and figure out who you are. And if, and the frustrating thing with that is when they tell you to do that and you do it and then they say, oh, well, you know, we actually like what you used to do. Yeah. Can you go the back to doing flop. that? And yeah. it's, it's like, man, it's, you know, when I walked in with Outskirts of Heaven, uh, I told them, I said, y'all, this song has to be put out. Like, we got to do something. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm playing this song out live and I'm getting a reaction that I've never seen before. I don't know what I can't explain it. I don't know what's going on, but we need to we need to do something. And then their immediate response was, "Okay, well, let's just hope it downloads." And I said, "Okay, you just told me it's all about the money, and I get it, I get it. But sometimes I think the music should just you should just go with what the the best song you got." And just see what happens, you know? Yeah, let's just gamble. Take a gamble on it. And lo and behold, that song checked every box with flying colors. It streamed like crazy. It downloaded like crazy. It tested like crazy. If if there were stations that were playing it, it was testing number one in the market. Right here in Nashville, Tennessee, one of the most progressive audiences in the nation when it comes to country music, number one for like nine weeks in a row. Yeah. And then they tell me, well, some stations, well, it's too long. Yeah. <laughs> it's too slow. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, well, it's just a, t- a little bit too religious for our audience. Yeah. I'm like. And, but that's just where, like, the independent game has changed yeah, so much. I hardly ever listen to the radio, do you? Oh, I don't. Yeah, absolutely. I'll turn it on just to see like, how, like, what's going on Well, I, I don't because my, my damn antenna broke on my truck going through the car wash. Broke too, yeah. Going mine's, through a car wash? So, yeah, mine's, mine's broke, too, but when I'm in the city, it picks up the radio. So every now and then I'll turn it <laughs> so on. So I don't even turn it on. I'm, I'm, I, I'm into podcasts, oh, well, yeah. you know, and, and um, YouTube. But ha- have, you, do you ha- do you, have you had much experience with having a uh, fake Craig Campbell, uh, like Instagrams and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's and it's always the same spill of uh, hello fan. Yeah, <laughs> that's like I feel bad for people that fall for that, right? Because you know there's people, people that do. do. Well, yeah, that's, they do, or otherwise they wouldn't be. A, it wouldn't yeah. be an issue. Yeah, people fall for it. Yeah, I feel like, and I know this sounds. I hate saying this. I sound like a loser, but we are internet personalities. Yeah, you know, I mean, hell, we have a. We're doing a fucking podcast right now. This is me. This is how I always am, you know, in the flesh. So if you're going to read that message and say that sounds like something I would say, you're out of your mind. What blows my mind is when when these people get scammed. I've I've gotten people sending me messages that were like – Mad and sue it wanted to sue me because yeah. they had given you know their life savings to this guy named Craig Campbell, and and they would forward me screenshots of the messages and it'd be, be stupid stuff like, yeah I'm I'm over here in wherever this country, uh my my son is having some sort and I was like one quick Google you would know that I don't have a son. <laughs> 
<laughs> or, not even accurate. But dude, if you, right. at just, all. if you Google me, I'm like five two or something. It's just, but <laughs> me too. But it's, yeah. I am, and I'm very, I'm very outspoken when it comes to my family. Like you can go, or just not even Google. Go to my, go to my last three or four posts, and you'll see that I have a, be- a beautiful wife, two beautiful daughters. I'm a but family it, man. It, it always comes. Yeah. <laughs> like people fall for the stuff, and it's, and it's like. First of all, I would never speak that way. That's terrible grammar. Second of all, it just do some a quick scan of my pages. You would realize none of that shit's real. So let's talk about some. Uh, so you just put out a badass song that you wrote with Jordan Walker. By God, by God, by God. Yeah, man. We uh, yeah, I wrote. wrote. Is that your most recent release, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We 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 put it out uh, earlier, about two months ago, I guess. And but yeah, Thomas. Uh, Thomas was, was on it. Uh, Jordan came in that day. It had the title "By yeah. God," and I said, "Man, I love that because I say by God all the time." And yeah, uh, Peril doesn't know what, it by God as, means. A, as, a, as a New Yorker, as the token Yankee in the room here. What is mm. "by God" like? What What's the context of saying like "by God"? Fuck yeah! Uh, so it's "fuck yeah," yeah. but saying "by God," it's yeah. like you know, this is some good coffee by God. Yeah, you know exactly something like that. <laughs> that kind of yeah, it's just like a it's like a that's right. He didn't he didn't know what. Pull this door too, man. Pull that door too. Pull I was like, too. why do we got to pull it for? Why do pull we gotta... that door too. Yeah, yeah. shut yeah. it. Yeah, but I was like, if I've already shut it, then what, what? And what if it's like a push to close? Same, Craig. I honestly <laughs> don't know why he still works here, but he's here. <laughs> Wait, so. I ask myself every day. <laughs> uh, yeah. So he <laughs> <laughs> every day. Um, where'd you get that Stella? By the way, uh, I was in the fridge. You want one? Hey, I'd sweet, love... sweet boy. Let's beer, beer, Craig. Yeah, we got I beer. Mean, I'm, I'm sipping I on think this. We... Probably got Miller Lite too. Whatever, Miller Lite. Yeah, Miller. Uh, I, there's three at the bottom, and look, look to your left. We got Miller Lite. No, I checked. Damn, y'all Back away. Back away. three of these bad boys in there. I think they drank them all after the Ryman last night. <laughs> And we need to get some more beer. Hey, ladies, this is Matt McElwain. He is single. He's <laughs> slamming his DMs. Hey, if he doesn't have STDs, then they don't exist. That's <laughs> <laughs> what he says during the live show. Yeah. They got a quick glimpse of the ass, and they're already on their way. Yeah. And that DM Monday shirt with the raised rowdy hat. So what What do you got coming out next? You got another song coming, or are you just going to push that one? We're going to ride this one for a little while, Yeah, um, just because we named the, the tour, the tour, by the, God. the Craig Campbell tour. By God, I love that. It's great. <laughs> um, great brand. So we're gonna ride it for a minute. Um, man, I got this. I, had, I actually, no kidding. Like last night, I think I just in my I either dreamed it, but I got this song that I recorded. It's a cover song. Yeah, but it's just me and the piano. And I've been posting some stuff on TikTok here lately, and I've noticed that my, stuff that kind of just. I'm not saying they're going viral, but they they have well way more views than. Is it the Travis Tritt stuff? Is that so? What it yeah, is? like, and it seems like the ballads are are catching on a little heavier. So, I got this one song, and it's a ballad, and it's like, it's just me and the piano. I'm thinking, just see what happens. I've never done that. I've never yeah. put out a song that's just just me and a and a. In, a, in an acoustic form. Hey, maybe the guy that sings it will reach out to you and ask you if he can produce it. <laughs> right? That would be incredible. Yeah. Uh, but so that's that's something I dreamed about last night, seriously. But I also, like I mentioned earlier about the the uh, the forgotten songs, I got. I mean, I got literally thirty songs sitting in a hard drive. Yeah. That are fantastic. Yeah, and well, so I mean, well, fuck writing songs, you know. You well, got it. If you got them in the tank, yeah, they're there. The so I mean, we're going to split it up, have a part one, part two, and um, just that's awesome, drop man. that thing. And that's then I'm great. also working on two other projects. I got one that I, w- I went in and re-recorded all of my radio songs. Oh, nice. Uh, we're going to put that out. It's going to be called the uh, Craig Campbell Almost Greatest Hits. <laughs> hey, that's, that's, awesome. Awesome. that's awesome. I will be buying that yeah. for sure. <laughs> um, and then I'm working on a cover project called Class of '89. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, like, 80s music or what? Just 80s the, the 89 to 95 section of country music. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be like a covers thing? Or yeah. What? yeah. You've, you're familiar with uh, Alan Jackson put out a record a bunch of years ago called Under the Influence. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just a bunch of covers. Dude, I like his, uh, like, Red on a Rose album. That's a good record. It's so good. Yeah. yeah. And it sounds good. Bluesy. Like, yeah. I love the whole thing. It's yeah. awesome. So, that's those are some things that are on my queue. If That's you great. Will. That's great. Um, TV oh, show? Your, your t- do you have a TV show? They said something about you having a TV show. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we can yeah it's, 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 it's centered around Grindstone Cowboy. Okay, cool. Um, so we can kind of talk about that all in one. Yeah, we're 
we have a uh, coffee shop we're opening actually pretty, like next week um i have the idea of of documenting it making a thing and then uh I talked to my management about, about it and they we pitched it to some networks the idea that none of them really bit uh so what we're doing is we're actually creating six episodes okay and so we'll have a product and then pitch that it's like here's what we're talking about and if you like it you go you know obviously have to purchase it yeah and run with it but uh yeah it's um six episodes start to finish it's it's a a little dramatic uh balancing music with girls playing volleyball and building the coffee shop and all this touring, every, all that kind of. Where is the coffee shop? Down in Eagleville. Down, that's where you live, Eagleville. Yeah. And um, and then the final episode is going to be we're going to reveal, and then we're also going to uh, gift a franchise to a family, man, that's so awesome. that they can uh, build their own grindstone cowboy. But it it'll be part of our Craig Campbell, man of the people. Yeah, for right? sure. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, that's we're going to focus on rural. Yeah, uh, where there's not a Starbucks nearby. Yeah, it's more of a give him a grindstone. He needs yeah, a exactly. Starbucks when you got a grindstone. One hundred percent. That's where that's. So yeah, that's that's great. That's what's happening. You're gonna that's have, all you, I have to say about that. You, <laughs> you, by, by God, you, by, by God, God. <laughs> good by God. coffee. That's by God, that's the definition. Yeah. That's all I have that's to say about that. that. By God, by God. Awesome. Um, are they gonna have cold brew coffee there? You bet. So I'm a big cold brew coffee. It's a guy. music venue too, so we're gonna have full bar. Oh no shit! Well, yeah, I've already got my first three shows booked. Nice. Really? Yeah, we got Kane and Smith in June. Hell yeah. We got Thompson Square in July and then Mo Pitney in August. That's great. That's, that's awesome. It's awesome. legit right there. That's as cool. Yeah. Like then to have it, how many people do you think you can fit in there? Well, we just the fire marshal came by today who was also a fellow piano player. He's also the fire chief. Small town shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he came by, he got us uh uh occupancy at sixty. That includes uh help. So we'll probably be able to sell anywhere from fifty to fifty five. So tickets cool, per intimate, yeah, That's intimate awesome. environment. Very uh, small, low key, uh, up close and personal, like almost like a, a, a bluebird style kind of thing. Nice. That's awesome. Acoustic. We had this, we had this place uh, called the the local in Springville, Alabama. It was there, and I mean, it was in Rolling Stone magazine, and it was like very small. I played there before it closed down, but. It was like that, just real small and intimate. This band called Three on a String used to play there a lot. Three on a String? Yeah, you ever heard of them? One no. of the, I think one of the guys went to my church yeah, they're in from Gardendale. Bobby Horton. Small town he's like a so Gardendale. That's where he's the like cross a, is, right? It he's is. Like that's a, it. <laughs> yeah, he was like a um, – he did like the Civil War reenactment stuff and stuff. Yeah, he, he was cool. But my they played at like my grandfather's retirement party, and uh, it was just a cool thing. But um, what about um, – the spider bite. Yeah, I was gonna, I was wondering what that was Let's doing on the sheet. That. What's up with the spider bite? I'm guessing he got bit by a spider. Oh yeah, but he it, like he put it on social media and made like a big thing. I don't know if I, I, I don't know about this. So yeah, it's, it was uh, I, 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 luckily I knew something wasn't right. So that the very next day, it had, felt like I had a big bruise on the back of my arm. So I went and uh, where where were you? Were you just like out in the field somewhere? No, no, or? I think it happened in my my bed. He was probably fishing. Um. <laughs> But this is, you know, that's what it started. That's what it looked like. Jeez. Let's see. That's the first day. Oh, fuck. Okay, day so that's one. just day one. Just go ahead and send me that. I'll get Sacco to throw it up yeah, on we'll, the screen. Yeah, we'll I already got up. anxiety. <laughs> day one, and then let's, let's fast forward to day 10. Uh, Jeez. Did it, it make you like, feel bad or what? I mean, looking at that would make me feel bad. Um, no, it just, just hurt like hell. Yeah, that's... Fuck. Jeez, how, Louise. How, how big of a spider? I mean, are you well, probably never probably never well they don't have to be big uh, <laughs> to cause a problem. Uh, we get to day 20. Size, size doesn't matter after all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> we'll get to the good stuff. This is day 25. Jeez. Yeah, like it looks it like you completely your, opens up. So, good like, do you take Lord medicine during mercy. this part? Or? Yeah, so luckily, uh, my manager it's like staff uh, yeah. was. Um, <laughs> Had you been to the hospital in this time? No. <laughs> you were just, rough, stomach, you were just roughing it out. With no, the, let me tell you. So my manager. He at, made a content. He, he um, knew a guy that was a trauma surgeon at Vanderbilt. Yeah. So he put me in contact with him like right away. So uh, 
he was like, man, you know, obviously I'm a tri- I'm a surgeon, so this ain't my area. He said, but I'm intrigued, and I have people in the dermatology world. He said, just send me a photo every day, and we'll we'll get this thing taken care of. So yeah, I sent him a photo every day, and he would he called in some prescriptions for me, treated it like a like a burn, open wound burn. Yeah, seriously, was a three month process. Jeez, from from start to finish. Now now this is you know. The finished product is is this day one hundred. Mm, it's dude. just a solid, solid scar. Scar, so and it's like, ooh. But yeah, it's uh, learned a lot about them little things, man. I mean, it's too bad you didn't get like any like the comic book powers. Like you could have been a real man, life Spider Man. Great, no, but I got you. I, I, I did wake up a few times. I was trying to shoot it out of there. <laughs> Give me that beer. <laughs> Spider Man is my favorite, dude. It wouldn't work. Yeah. It didn't work at all. Damn. But I, you know, I learned a lot about them things, man. I, 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 I could teach you. Uh, Sarah Bryce, actually, Lee Bryce's wife, saw my post and she, she called me. She said. Because they had an infestation. Oh, let me show you. They also said, "Hey, you know, don't you know, put you put you a little sticky trap uh, in the corner or under your bed. Uh, see what 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 level of infestation you have." So we put this thing out. Look at that. Whoa! Yeah, those are some big fucking spiders. This, is, this was about two weeks worth right there. Oh no, sir! I don't oh, want to put one of those under my bed. That's just Spide, one, spider one, farm. That's one sticky trap under my bed. Oh no, I got to put one. I of heard those like under. Uh, like the average person swallows like a a spider a month or something in their sleep. Is that well, is that I a don't thing? Know. I would. Hey, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised. I but like I said, I learned a lot about these things, man. They. What kind of spiders were those? All you? those brown recluse. Oh, says that was brown recluse. Oh. Um, they can't bite you. Yeah, you, you literally their fangs are so small. You re- literally have to f- push into them, like you have yeah. to force, and they can't bite through Jeans, clothes. clothes. So, yeah. like people worry about putting their foot in a boot. As long as you got a sock on, you're fine. Yeah, you're good. But uh, and then only ten percent of the world is this allergic. Yeah, and most yeah. people when you get bit by you a brown just got lucky. Place, <laughs> so yeah, it's, luck of the draw. I almost lost my arm. It's uh, God. Yeah, was it, it was. It was, was it painful. It was. It was just aggravating too. Like I couldn't see it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was on the back. Of, I mean, I literally right couldn't here. see yeah. it. I had to. Couldn't. Mm-hmm. I just had to have my wife help me out with treatment and all that. Put my bandages on and because I couldn't, couldn't get to it. It was aggravating. Yeah, crazy. But yeah. I, he was like, "Hey, you need to." You need to deburr that thing. I was like, "What?" He's like, "No, yeah." He's like, "Take a, take a, take a hot washcloth and just wipe it and dig, dig and get all that nasty stuff out of." It. I said, "No, no, no." We're doing all that. Oh, no, but then no. he's like, "No, it needs to be done. It's either you do it or you bring. You come to me." And I, I said, "Okay." So I, I let a friend of mine, uh, a nurse, and she, she's like, "Yeah, I can do it." That was the, some of the most pain I've ever been in in my life. I was just cr- just because you've just literally taken you take Ooh. like if you had an open burn wound and just taking a rag and just Getting wiping it. That. Yeah, that yeah. one picture is like it's gross, like yellow and it's gross. Yeah. yeah, we definitely. Need, I need you to send me those pictures so I'll we can them. put them up yeah. on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. the, I'll send them yeah. all to you, man. That's, I see that's that a, whole that's folder. A, that's a fire TikTok. I'll send yeah. you that whole that's folder. Great. Yeah. Speaking of TikTok, how has TikTok changed the game for you as far as like? Being an independent artist, did you hate it when it first came on the scene? Or were you, I mean, or were you on Vine? Because you've been around so. Well, long. actually, Vine no. Actually, I, fun fact right here is uh, Vine. I was the first artist to debut a full album on Vine. Vine, re, you know, we teamed up with Vine, so I debuted my first or my second record, six seconds of each chorus. Yeah, on Vine. Oh wow, that's awesome. Um, but I wasn't. I didn't get into it. Maybe I should have. I knew about it. I didn't. I didn't run with it like I should have. But like I said, my my first record label, we had one. We had one girl in there that that was like really trying to help get shit going, but she got shut down so often, saying, you know, we just don't have the budget. We don't have the budget. We don't have the budget. And, and but she always had these great ideas, and we, but we never could do it. And and Vine was one of them. She said, we really need to focus on this Vine. Yeah. And we just we never did. And even with TikTok, I'm not much of that whole, you know, 
dance and stuff. You know, it's just yeah, not yeah, my yeah. thing. I mean, I can twerk, but that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. I get it. You lim- it's, you know your limitations. I know my limitations. Um, I can't do do or none of that shit. <laughs> I just have my own style of dancing, you know. I can wobble, 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 wobble. You can. You got kids though; they kind yeah. they keep you fresh. They 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 do a good job. They're quick to tell me, "Daddy, that that, that, no, that ain't good at all." Let's not post that. That that ain't it. Oh, that ain't it. Term. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quick. Um, but so I lean on a little bit of humor with my TikTok, and, and even then, I was like, ah, oh, just takes up so much time. It's it's a job. Yeah. And then so my manager now. Uh, she was like, "I don't care. We got to do it. We got to. We got to post all the time." And luckily, the you know, for me being able to team up with Warren, I went from eighteen thousand followers on TikTok to seventy thousand in a matter of thirty days. Yeah, you know, so that was a big deal. Um, so then I just started feeding that machine, and yeah, and I still didn't want to do it, but uh, Maddie, my manager, she said, "Let's figure this out." Um, so I, I got these guys that come to the house once a week and we, yeah, we great. We man. grab your con- content. is awesome. So we grab it and they edit it and, you know, because I just, it takes a long, a lot of time it out does. of your data to, to, I feel like social media now, especially with TikTok and Instagram reels and Facebook reels and all that stuff. It's a creative muscle. Just like songwriting is 100%. just like, you know, Anything we do that's creative, it's something that we have to continue to get good at, you know, over time. No like, doubt. It's it's And it's a lot of it is trial and error, you know. Like, I posted a video three times the other day before it went, you know, before it did anything. Like, I'll just take it off and put it up a different time, you well, know. And, it's, and not only that, it's frustrating whenever you, you post something and, and you just – Post it just for fun, and then it takes off. Yeah, and then you and, got, and then you got to sing "Dick Down in Dallas" for the rest of your life. You gotta get it. <laughs> Trust me. Well, I'm talking about like I posted this. <laughs> I posted this dumbass uh, video of a cow. Like he looked like he was about to jump off a ledge, and so I put "Suicide Watch" in progress, and I was like, "Don't do it." Yeah, and I, it took off. I like the one you did with Styles uh, when you. What's were your it. name? What's your name? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but then you spend all this time really trying to get creative and make something really awesome, and then it just flops. It just sits there. Yeah. That's heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. But, I posted a video right before this started, and I had this thing where I, could, I post a video of a, of a song. I don't really want to look at it. I feel like as soon as I look at it, like it quits going. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I, I, but we took a break before you came in here. I had like 100,000 views, so I'm hoping that oh, has a movie when we get done. We'll that's see what awesome. happens. Hopefully you're awesome. super famous when it It was a ends. video with my mom, so I think it'll be, you know. That mom content yeah, does yeah, well. We'll see. Mom, yeah. I posted one, me and mama singing the other day. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, yeah, it's you, you can't do wrong with the kids. Uh, mo- moms uh, and and just dicks and butt fucks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, man. What have you been listening to? Music, man. Um, I been listening to. I got okay. So got this uh, thing that me and my ma- my manager are doing. We're not necessarily. I wouldn't call it a record label. We are uh, got a company started that. We are helping people get navigate the waters of of uploading songs to DSPs and marketing mm-hmm. and just pointing them in the right direction. Them bringing their own money to the table because I don't have any to, to to invest at the moment. But got a couple of guys that we we are uh, we are pretty excited about. So yeah. I've been listening to music for them. To uh, and then you know I I've, I've been in the producing world as well. I got. A couple of guys I've I've been working with, and and so, just yeah, just a lot of potential cut songs. You, want, you can you can go in and plug those guys if you want. Who are some of those dudes? Well, yeah, um, if couple, you want to share, yeah, a couple of guys I'm excited too, man. Like um, this one guy, he's coming to town next week to to shoot his music video. That's I'm awesome. pretty nice. pumped. Uh, his name is Cody Coz, C O Z Z, and he's from Colorado, and he just won the. Uh, uh, the Rocky Mountain Country Music Awards. Uh, he he won uh, like the fan voted the Fan Army yeah. Award, which I thought was kind of cool. It's a big that's a big one to win because yeah. that means you have people in yeah. your in your pond that are that are fucking for with sure. You. So good. so he he's he's dropping a, a new song soon called On My Way. Uh, fortunate that I got to write that song uh, and produce it, but he's 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 a 
super talented dude. And then we're working with another guy uh, named Ethan Payne. He was on American Idol a couple okay, of years ago. Yeah. I, don't, he, I think he, he was just on the show. He's on, I think, uh, Luke's team. I, I don't know all the details, but uh, super talented kid from from uh, from South Georgia. Um, and just really good voice. Another Georgia boy. Uh, you, why not? You, you, why not? You, you dogs stay together. Why like not? The Georgia crew stays together. You know, together. and that's crazy. A lot of people ask, is they, you know, what what is it about Georgia? And I think it's just a, a kinship. Mm-hmm. So when you when somebody moves to Nashville, they you know where are you from Georgia? Like, oh, dude, you know you start talking and then yeah. you just like holler at me if you ever need anything. It's that I think that it's a lot of that. Who, I agree. Who were those guys for you when you moved up here? Well, Luke, Luke. Were there any others like you know, Dallas that? and Ben Hayslip and all those guys? You know, I started writing with them and um, just yeah, that that kind of thing. Yeah, pretty cool. The, That's the, awesome. Almost like an instant camaraderie of of you start talking about bulldogs and you start talking about where you from and, and oh yeah, you know Vada, I'm from Vada, you the onions and so just yeah. stuff like that. It's pretty crazy. Our crew is like McKinney's from Georgia, Maxwell's from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I'm from Alabama. Ella's from Alabama. Joy Beth Taylor's from Alabama. Clay's from Alabama. Clay's Mitch from Alabama. is from Alabama. Mitch from Justin Holt's from Alabama. I'm from Alabama. Bonner's you know Gardendale. Alabama. And I'm yeah. from New York. So <laughs> yeah. Man, I, at, at one time, I had four people on my tour bus that was from St. Louis. All of them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was the craziest thing. But, yeah. So, do you have a deal with five-hour power or five-hour energy? No, man. But I've, I've been – I wanted to make that thing, that, that video forever. I said, I want to make a 30-second commercial – uh, with five hour and it like just you watch the clock and it to the minute you know yeah and so when we started when the when I had those guys come out I said this is one video that I want to do yeah but we made it a little bit longer than thirty seconds but yeah it's no I they did comment yeah they commented on on the video but yeah I, we got uh we got we don't we have a liquid death sent us a bunch of liquid death they ain't paying us anything <laughs> but. You know, free water. What free is water. liquid death? Tell it's, me about it's it. It's water. It's it's mountain water. It's, I mean, dude, when you drink it, I mean, just listen. <laughs> He's an ASMR guy. I mean, it's we just, got we got one right there. If you want, if you want, if you want to try, get me started on ASMR. My daughters. Oh my god! What is ASMR? It's, like the, well, it's the sound effects. Sit there and watch oh, yeah. these, these people eat, and all you see is their mouth and their fingernails, and you hear it's just. People, somebody like biting into an apple is or that stuff like, like people that. People get off on that What's, or like, what is it? Let me tell you something, dude. I don't know, but when you pull up, when they pull them up, and they're on the, they're watching them on like air, airplay, and and they look, and they have seventy five million views. It's like, and it's it's a three minute video of nothing but sound. We somebody, literally live in hell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's dumb. by God, by God, <laughs> yeah. by God. But yeah, uh, liquid death. Yeah, that's good, man. You got to try it. They have seltzers too. Um, this is just the water, water. I had my gallbladder moot, uh, taken out, so seltzer kind of. Have you ever had a moment like that? Talk the moment in Louisiana. So like we played a show in Louisiana. Um, I had some fried Oreos before we went on. I had a scheduled surgery surgery to have my gallbladder taken out, gallstones. But I was like, fuck it. Last weekend with gallbladder, let's just eat some fried Oreos. You know, <laughs> run it up, baby. R- Rust in Louisiana. So good. Get on stage. Great, great crowd. I mean, I get into, we do like a drop D section. We do like, you know, some covers like fishing in the dark and buy me a boat. And I get into that section. I'm just like, oh, fuck. I'm starting to have a gallbladder attack on stage. What's that feel like? It's the worst pain. It's like a kidney stone, but like a million times worse because there's a, where your gallbladder is, there's like a, there's a nerve that runs all the way up into your shoulder so it's like it you know i can't imagine it's miserable mm-hmm. so i i already know what's happening because this happens so many times i've got the surgery tuesday and uh we play we have one of our slower songs that me and my guitar player wrote together it's called whole lot of nothing we make it through that and then i'm just like they're like you know McElwain's back there like kind of fizzing out on the drums and i'm like because like i've gone outside and thrown up like three times and then come yeah back i'm running back there with towels and shirts yeah, and water like and like, I'm swapping just, them out i'm just like barely i'm just ma- barely making it through and everybody just, knows what's going on yeah. but your guys and, and our yeah, crew guys, yeah, yeah yeah but the crowd doesn't you know right and i get in the talk back i said start dig down in dallas now Cause I'm like these people came to see a show. We're at least gonna play the 10 minute version of Dick Down in Dallas. For you. <laughs> so he starts the track up, and we go into it and we play it. 
I I go off the stage, down the ramp, take my shirt off. I'm just like miserable, and they get me to the emergency room. Yeah, we, well, they, the owner of the club um, took us to the and nearest then get, hospital. Then and we get to the emergency room, and they're just like not taking it serious at all. I'm like, <laughs> my shirt's off. I'm laying on the floor like <laughs> screaming. And then finally they get me back there, give me some drugs, and then I'm good. Didn't you walk off stage saying, I'm going to the hospital. See you later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I had like fans messaging me like, I hope you're okay. I hope everything's good. And uh, but that was a hell of a crowd, man. That was that was. Where uh, was this? Reston, uh, Louisiana. Reston, Louisiana, LA. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite spot that you like to go? As far as like shows, like a crowd where you're like, "Fuck yeah, we're going!" By God, we're going to this place, man. I tell you, I mean, there's. Look, I don't. I can't say that I got one that I love over another. Just I, it. It all depends on the crowd. Uh, at that particular time, there's places I've played that have been badass, and then go back the next time, and it sucked. You know, we've been so, to Joe's in Kearney, Nebraska. Kearney, Nebraska. How do you say it? Joe's Honky Tonk in Kearney, Nebraska. You been little, I have not. I've bar. been to Kearney, Nebraska though, but yeah. I don't remember going to that place. Yeah, that's a smaller bar, but it's it's fun. I was, you know, like for instance, uh, there's one, there's a couple that are consistent, like. The Dusty Armadillo is super consistent. Yeah, we haven't like, done that one yet. I've been there, uh, not with yeah, Trey, dude. Yeah, you go. It's we're, low, playing, we're low playing the Grizzly Rose this week. Grizzly man. Rose is is I've only well here here's the good thing about not being on radio. Yeah, because my entire radio career there was always a damn a battle between yeah. those two stations, and you know if you played the Grizzly Rose, the Grizzly Rose was attached to one of the stations. I don't remember which one. But if you played the Rose, the other station said, well, we're not playing your music. Yeah. Yeah, the politics. And they were both, they were both reporters. So you, you had to – I was like, well, shit. You take you gotta it. Got to go to the bigger one. Yeah. So I just uh, – I've, I've only played it, I think, twice in my whole time career. But I played – I played once. I played piano for uh, Tracy Bird out there. Yeah. Uh, it was my first time at the Grizzly. Was that your first gig? Was that for Luke Bryan? No, it was after. After. Yeah. Cool. But, yeah, I've, I think I've played it twice – and oh. both were sold out, which that's – it's also not far from where my wife is from. So she, Damn, she can account. Damn, I played for Tracy Bird. Who else you played for? Those were my, those are my two, like, official on-the-payroll gigs. Yeah. I've played piano for other people. Yeah. Like, I played for Jeannie Seeley one time. I played for John Barry. I've, I've uh, yeah, a bunch, yeah. but not, like, full-time. You eventually got to a point where you're like, fucking, I want to be an artist, or how did that go down? Well, when Tracy fired me, yeah. um, I, I was back – I was focusing – I was digging into the to the songwriting, yeah. um, singing demos and playing on Lower Broadway. And so, so I was like, you know what? Yeah, I, I don't I don't want to be the side guy anymore. Yeah. I want – you know, when – I gotta, I gotta figure out how to, how to get my name on the marquee. Yeah, so. I just can't believe that you were somebody's backup. Bro. And you, and You're you were, so on, and you were on Broadway. That's I didn't know. Oh, you I play, love I, I Broadway. I didn't know you played. You were playing. But what were the? What years was that? Like what bars were there? Was Honky Tonk Central o, there yet? I played from O four. Because Lower Broadway wasn't like it is now Dude, at all, absolutely. especially back then. Uh, you know, people. Uh, it sounds like I'm, I'm talking like it was years and years ago. It was not that long ago that no. Broadway was. A third of the bars. Yeah, about yeah. 50, 10 years ago. Dude, it honestly, was different. I'll be real with y'all. I love going to Broadway more than I love going to Midtown. Damn. Really? Yeah. I have an anxiety attack. I'm already having an anxiety attack about going like, to Prince I'm not, game. I'm not. I don't like go. I don't like going out. Honestly, it's not my jam. I don't drink, so like, it's just not my thing. So, but well, if I, but if I'm gonna go out, I might as well just go to Broadway. I'm not I'm more less likely to get bothered down there than I am going to Midtown. Hey man, I know you don't know me, but uh, <laughs> let's write sometime. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Did you have you run in? I'm sure you've run into that before, yeah. where people come up to you like where you're where you're just trying to go out and you have. That we should write you know, some time or the this or that. Are you able to fly in Calgary? Yeah, it's, it's not so bad because I, you know, I'm a mostly known for wearing a cowboy hat. True. So yeah. when I don't have it on, it's 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 under the radar kind of thing. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. It's like for me, people in town, know and me. you're tall too. So like people, it's and the know, hat, you the, the sixty five. My body looks like a melted ice cream cone. It's like, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, but like in Broadway, it's like, you know. People might know Dick Down in Dallas or Single again, but they don't know who the fuck I am. You know what I mean? That's what I love about my life right now. I can still go to Walmart. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, that is a, a catch twenty two about about fame, man. You know, you you think you want it, you want it, and and you know, people say, "Do you want to be as famous as as you know Luke Combs?" I'm like, well, 
I doubt there was a time where Luke Combs said, all right, we're going to stop right there. Yeah. I'm as famous as I want to be. Yeah. You know, when the train is running, you got to let it run. Got to run. No, no, yeah. no matter. Uh, but the, I, the the flip side is is that. It's like, you know, I've heard that Luke can't go nowhere. Yeah, he, he yeah. talks about missing missing going to Revival at Tin Roof. Yeah. Like, like maybe not being able to go and do those, not being able to pop up that whiskey such, jam. He's such a noticeable dude, too. Yeah, because you know, like, it's that recognizable, yeah, recognizable just, face. And that was the thing for me, too. I think, like, when I first started playing music, it was like, oh, man, I want to be like Jason Aldean or Luke Bryan or, you know, like. I want to be like, you know, I want to crush it. But the longer I chase my dreams and I realize like, hey, man, this shit's fucking hard. You know, like going home every Christmas, every Thanksgiving, every family get together and your buddies are all talking about their 401ks and asking you, you still doing that music thing, you know, because, dude, I was broke for years, like barely fucking. Y'all know how it is. Yeah. And it's like, I finally just got to a point to where I was just like, man, I just want to make a living doing what I love. And I'll, and I'll, you know, and I'll never forget, I was in my van driving one day and I just told God, I was like, God, if this is all I ever get to do is make music with my friends during the week and play in a cover band four nights a week, then that's fine. But wouldn't it be cool if I just had a little bit of success here, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, seven months later, there, here's your sign. Yeah. And I, a lot of people laugh at me, you know, because I say, you know, the night that Dick Down Dallas did what it did, I went in my room and I just got down on my knees by myself and I said, I'll never question you again. Thanks. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Which I do question him all the I time. Mean, all, you know, well, you have to. Really, you you yeah. got to question somebody. Might yeah. as well question him. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, that, that was my goal from day one. Even when, even when I was, I put my band together in Georgia, I said, I just want to be able to pay my bills. Yeah. And with music. Yeah. I don't care. And then I had this, my buddy called me. He said, Hey, if I get you a job up here, would you move to Nashville and be my roommate? I said, Hell yeah. You put me in the, in the, the melting pot of country yeah. music. And then that, that it became that. I said, You know, I like my day job, but I, if I could play music here in Nashville full time and pay my bills, that's all I want. Yeah. And I was able to do that. Oh, back to my story about the whole, Demo singing. Yeah. That when I signed my record deal, they wanted me to quit. And and I said, guys, I'm making a good bit of money. So they offered me this draw. And I said, that's that's not even half, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, well, we need you to quit singing demos. I said, well, you're going to have to come up with something else. And yeah. So they, they doubled it. And then I put in my, my contract that anything under $500 I could keep. Yeah. So I could still sing demos like yeah. but I became very picky. Yeah. But uh but yeah, man, being able to, to live in Nashville and and pay my bills and and sing well, that was I was I was successful. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. It's just like even now, I mean, it's that's that's the whole goal. It's just like in the long I feel like for me for so long, I had so many different hustles to make income, you know. And for now, for me, moving forward, it's the same thing. It's like, you know, I got the music. We got the merch. We got the, you know, whatever. We got the content graph. Got the content stuff. stuff, you know. We got the podcast. Like, let's continue to have fun. And, like, you know, I don't have to have a million dollars, you know. I just bought a brand new truck, but I've been driving a car with half a million miles on it for 10 years, you know. So it's like. That's right. I don't, I don't care. Mm -mm. You know, it's just like I just want to be able to help the people that are around me that have been here with me since I got started in this thing, and 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 uh, you know, just keep it going. Yeah, and I'm saying, man, I'm, I mentioned it earlier. I'm just I'm blessed to to have had that those those songs on the radio, and some some have done pretty well, and was able to that when I did become independent, I was I already had kind of a, a jump start. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just good to know that that I mean I can still and people like you know even ten years ago it was like what do you where do you see yourself in ten fifteen years I said I hope I'm still just doing this yeah you know it's it's like that damn Luke Combs song if I wasn't doing this I'd be doing that, this that's the best song I'd be trying to do this you know? yeah yeah um and I'm 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 very grateful um that that 
I have been able to that I am still still here. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. I count my I I get frustrated as we all do here yeah. in this music business, um, especially when you really do get to finally see behind the curtain with all the the politics. Oh yeah, all the shenanigans, all the handshaking, all the deals that are getting done on, on not, that are not on your behalf. Yeah, I think it's just like don't get we. It's it's hard. For, it's easy for oh, us yeah. to get caught up in that shit. Yeah, you it's, it's I mean? got to be like when a it's horse. really yeah, about horse this blinders. is this is our gift to help people. You know, with our music. Yeah, and put, that's all really that matters. Yeah, put your blinders day. on. Like, be like a racehorse and just don't try not like focus on what you got to do. And yeah, also focus also not looking around what the other guys doing. Well, what that's this you know doing. that's 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 a motherfucker looking around and seeing like oh this guy's doing this but I got like why am I not doing that? Yeah, you know? it's been it's been two 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 pieces of advice that I've gotten in the last couple of years that have just really changed my perspective. One is that. We were. I was at a guy's house. His name's Brian Fisher. He he has a show called Fisher's ATV World. Great dude. Great family. Awesome. He said uh, we were. He was showing me his man cave at his house, and it's really awesome. Big TV surround sound. It's just incredible. He puts on the Kenny Chesney like DVD, and I said, "Man, I said, how do you get from what I'm doing to that?" Yeah. He says, "Man, you just got to stay in your lane." He said he found his lane and he stayed in it, and he just foot on the gas. And so I was like, to your point, yeah, don't don't worry about what this guy's doing. That that won't work for you. Yeah, it's it's a race, but you're the only one in it. You 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 got to run your race. You got to be the best Craig Campbell you can be. Be the yeah. best Trey Lewis you can be. And the, the second piece of advice was, I was frustrated about you know looking into somebody else's lane and saying, man, I, I feel like I should have gotten that opportunity. Why can't I do this? Why can't this happen? Why can't, you know, it's easy to go where, go there. Yeah. And he, and he, this guy said, man, no matter where you get, no matter how, how you climb the ladder, you will always want to get to that next thing. Yeah. And you will always be frustrated as to why you can't get to that next thing. He said, I promise you right now, some of the biggest stars in this world are miserable as they can be oh, yeah. because they can't figure out how to get to that next thing. He says, so you just got to be, you got to say the prayer of serenity, adapt, and and just do your thing. Enjoy the moment. That's right. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for coming on to the podcast, man. Man, this has been great. Thanks uh, for did the you beer. Kill, did you kill any deer last week? Or, I mean, turkeys. Uh, turkeys. No, we didn't. Sorry. I, I try to be cool and say I hunt, but I don't hunt. No, no. I, I fished I went, a year round. I went, uh, and hey, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to talk. And maybe if they they see this, uh, but uh, yeah, my my guide, he was uh, he worked hard. He worked really yeah. really hard. We we couldn't get the turkeys to get close enough. We heard a couple of them. In his defense, nobody at the whole camp got a bird the whole yeah. week. So it wasn't it wasn't just us, and so, but it was it was fr- he. I'm sure he was super frustrated. I was like, man, it's all it's all good, man. I get to hang out and play some music, and eat some good food, and go hunting. It's it's all good. But yeah, I didn't get a turkey. Well, there's a place if you like bass fishing, which I, you fish, right? yeah, yeah. I mean, got a song about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> part of the part but, of. But uh, but uh, there's a place down in Florida that I go to. It's called Beanville Outdoors. Um, check it out. If not, we can go together. Beanville? Beanville Outdoors. It's awesome. Let's go. I've, I caught my biggest fish out there, 8.2 pounds. I've never caught a fish. Well, not a – is it a bass? Bass. Yeah, yeah I've never Large caught – Largemouth, Florida bass. Bass. That'd be we got to go for free. We played down in Sanford, Florida, and one of the guys that's friends with the owner, we got to – they have cabins. They feed you three meals a day. You have a guide, our guide, Dean. Is it the owner He's of awesome. the – is it, is it the barn? Yeah, it's the barn. Uh, yeah, it's, it's he, but well, is he it his place. It, but it's you know the tall skinny he's, guy. He's connected with it. He's connected okay, with yeah, because he asks me every time. He's like, dude, let me know. Come out a day early. Let's go. go. Take, take dude, advantage it, of it. Do it. It's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Done. It's awesome. I've been. I I just went. I down love there. that guy too, and he's I, always good to me. Yeah. I just went down there for four days, and <laughs> it's great. I'm going back in June. I'm going to shoot some content, and then yeah. I try to go back every chance I get. I'm always looking at my calendar. I took Matt with me. Um, my, my drummer over there, sweet boy, that's what we call him. <laughs> He's a sweet boy. And, uh, <laughs> I saw the Burrell's been. 
And I never, I'm, I was not, a, I did not grow up really fishing at all. And I was pulling in like five, six, seven He pulled in a lot of that uh, hydrilla stuff they have in the water. I caught some good, I caught some <laughs> there's, fish there's, too. Listen, yeah. there's 14 lakes. They're all. He told, yeah. he, it's funny, this guy, he told yeah. me all about this. Yeah. It's, He's like, it's you gotta great. come. It's the best experience ever. I mean, they'll feed you three meals a day. They have, they have lodging. They do hunting um, too. They, they do well, that's, and stuff. And too, I think he, there, he was kind of saying, like, you know, just we'll set it all up. You just bring your guitar and sing a little bit. And, and yeah. you know, we'll, well I, what I want to do is eventually start like a songwriter thing. That would be there, awesome too. Where we go down there and then, you know, like we could have our fans come down there and they could fish and maybe, you know, like they could enter a chance. They could go fishing with us or we could swap out or whatever. And then at night we could do like a songwriter show right there yeah, in the cafeteria up, and play for them. Yeah, or set up, yeah. set up the fire, yeah. have that kind of intimate environment. Absolutely. That would be cool. will I say, would love that. If you're in it, I'm in it. We can, get, yeah. we can get one more. Well, let's and go. We'll do it. Let's do it. Well, thank y'all for watching my podcast, DM Monday. Um, be sure y'all go follow Craig Campbell. Um, listen to his music if you haven't already. The guy's a legend. He's awesome. And uh, <laughs> be sure y'all subscribe. Or, you know, all that good stuff. Love y'all. Peace out. You gotta have someone to crack a joke and a beer with. We need someone that'll always be right.